Day four, races six and seven. John Kostecki on the left-hand side. The man on the right is Sir Russell Coots, probably the man that made the decision to change out Kostecki for Sir Ben Ainsley. And Larry Ellison, the head man for Oracle, who has bankrolled this whole Oracle Team USA. He is the defender of the cup right now, looking very comfortable and casual. But Kenny, I imagine he's going to put the pressure on his boys today. Both, all three of them look comfortable and casual, to <laughs> use your phrase, Todd. But I'm guessing they're churning inside. This is this is do or die day for for Oracle. They have, they got to hope that this change to tactician spot pays off or things are going to go bad really fast. You will get the greatest views and the greatest sounds on board. We'll try to let you listen in when possible as we are 2.22 away from the start. And it'll be Team USA on the left side of your screen that gets port entry, which means they get a 10 second advantage going into the start box. And then it's up to them to try and dictate or force New Zealand's hand. We'll really look for communication today. And a lot of this rides on, uh, on uh, the young strategist Tom Slingsby. He's got to be the link in between the tactical role and the helmsman. He's been there this whole time. I, I think Tom Slingsby's a key player in today's race. So very the aggressive mouse. move there. Yeah, Todd, very aggressive move for New Zealand to jump in right away. This is the cat and mouse game, Gary, as they try to get themselves into position, forcing the other team's hand. And remember, they cannot cross the start line until it hits zero. What we saw there, Todd, was the breeze is much more out of the left or coming off the shore than we've seen in the past. It was actually difficult for Oracle to get across Team New Zealand because of the angle of the wind. This has set them up to be in a tougher spot than usual. This is good. Right now, we have a 1.8 knot flood current, so being on the windward side of the start will be helpful. Jimmy sounds pretty comfortable, but uh, you know this is going to be a tough spot. There's a lot of pushing and blocking to go on here. There's still a long time to go before this start. Team New Zealand is in a reasonably comfortable spot. They're getting close to the line. On the wing, on the wind. We're almost racing here. On the, we're racing, full speed. What he's done very well, Todd, is get them down to that yellow line or the lay line to the pin. Really good strategy if you're early for the line. I think he could be in complete control here by the start. Ten seconds away. This is race number six, day four of the 34th America's Cup. The Americans have the advantage with Sir Ben Ainsley as the tactician. Will it pay off? We are clean to go racing. So as they cross the line, Gary Johnson, you got to like what you're seeing if you're a fan of Oracle Team USA. Oracle played it perfectly. New Zealand a little too aggressive, too early, too far away from the line. And as a result, they're four boat lengths behind. Big mistake by the Queens. Ben Ainsley on the far right-hand side of your screen. Normally a helmsman playing the role of tactician today. At mark number one, it is the defenders of the cup, Oracle Team USA, with their biggest lead so far here in the America's Cup. So, Todd, that was all about Jimmy Spithill. There was nothing to do with any tactics there. That was the instincts of the driver. They came back early to the start line, but he did a really nice job getting down to that lay line and really making no no place for the Kiwis to get around them. A perfect blocking scenario. Oh, little bill. Oh, I think so, no. And 
Jimmy Spittle decides now is the time to jive right when the Kiwis go. It looks like they're much closer than they are, but the Americans still maintain about a 70-meter lead over the Kiwis, but it's dropping quickly because the Kiwis jive much faster. A marginal, marginal jive by Oracle. They came off the foils, whereas Emirates Team New Zealand didn't. And all of a sudden, they've gone from a nice little lead to a really tough spot. They're going to need Jets to get out from underneath potentially the wing wash of Emirates Team New Zealand. Crucial this is like moment. two of five for the Americans with a small lead. Remember, their lead was nine seconds around mark number one. We check in on the water with Gary Jobson. The big game out here is getting a win. These gusts come in. If you get it first, and that's where New Zealand is, you're going to accelerate and have a big advantage. And the wing going across on Oracle just seems to be slow, where the New Zealand boat contrast, it pops through and they accelerate a little faster. Big moments in this race, Todd. This is nice very smooth. close. Whether Oracle, they've done, they've done what they needed to do and actually gotten out from underneath the potential wing wash of Emirates Team New Zealand. But these jives have to be smooth. We see how much you can gain or lose with a bad jive. Coming on you here. Yeah, he's faster, but he can't go anywhere. That's on board or a big decision coming up of which gate do you take? We'll see what that wing wash does to the key. We still traveling at over 29 knots, which translates to 33.4 miles an hour. Now remember, they were deficit of nine seconds behind the Americans right now. Ken, it looks like down to about two seconds. Yeah, well, it's been rumored that Oracle is, is a little quicker, and we've seen this on the run. Besides that one jive, they are a little bit faster going downwind. We're seeing it again here today, but this is what the sailors feel as well, talking to them yesterday in between races. They're setting up now. Let them go, eh? 20 seconds to Best pressure. Best pressure looks here. They yeah, jive. Is okay here. It's just lifting a oh, bit. It's starting to get soft in there. I think right, right here is good. Probably 15 seconds. Yeah, probably. Very interesting there, Todd. You're seeing. Uh, Tom Slingsby, the strategist, being far more vocal today than he's been in the past with Kostecki in the boat. Completely different, different tone in the back of the boat. Good chance of a piece, okay? Oh! Number 10 is Ray Davies, the tactician for Emirates Team New Zealand, in constant communication with his skipper and helmsman, Dee Barker. And he just said, good chance for a piece. That means that when they jive back, they're going to be on starboard tack. He thinks they might have a port starboard situation coming up with Oracle. And once again, the Kiwis able to stay almost completely on the foils as they make that jive or turn back into the course as they get close to the boundary. It's tougher in this light air, though. It's really hard. They'll be minimizing maneuvers really close cross. Now, if you're the Americans, are you going to jibe right on top of them? No, no, you're going to you're going to extend here. Make sure you lay the mark. Make sure you only have to do one more jibe into the gate and possibly do one less maneuver. That's where you're going to pick up distance right at the bottom. Oracle's going to have to go at least one more time as well. Just minimize your maneuvers. Ten. Guys, make it simple. That's what they got to be thinking. Let's go. Wing on if you can. Go. Wing up. Five. Stand by. Ball's coming back. And a little better jive there on that time. As we go on the water, Gary Jobson, how do you like Oracle's setup as they get ready for gate number two? 
I like Oracle's position. On starboard with the right away coming down to the mark, and they're doing a good job jiving. This whole race is going to come down to which tactician can call where the wind is on the next leg going to windward. All right, Jabo, if you were out there being a tactician role for Oracle Team USA, would you head closer to the shore? Would you head out and try to take advantage of a possible cone situation behind Alcatraz? If I'm on board Oracle, I take the cone, less current. 1.8 knots is a lot of current down here, and Oracle needs to stay out of it. Go up the cone. Kenny, do you agree? Well, they are set up for a split here, though. That's what. That's the only thing. Uh, Emirates Team New Zealand forced to split here. Likely Oracle rounds the mark on the right on the left side of our screen, and Team New Zealand will round the right the right one. This is going to force a split right out of the box. Gate number two. It's Oracle Team USA with the lead. Can they hold on to it as they will head in towards shore? And the Kiwis at gate number two look like they will try and take advantage of the less current behind. Alcatraz Island. I think you're going to find Oracle roll into attack here fairly soon and try to take advantage of the cone. We'll see. An amazing lead. The Americans increase their lead from Mark 1 to 2 by 3 seconds. This has been the kryptonite for Oracle Team USA. Leg three of these races going back up win, where the Kiwis have taken advantage in almost every race and retaken the lead if they've trailed. There's Oracle coming back. They'll play the inside edge of the cone. Keep in mind, this is a really close race, and New Zealand will have right away when the two boats come together again. Ken, from our perspective down here on the water, New Zealand has more wind, more pressure, and that's making them go faster. Good opportunity for New Zealand to advance. Nice gains here. Standing by in three. And it is almost a dead heat right now with the Americans trying to maintain their lead. It goes away, but as the tack comes from the Kiwis, the Americans get it back by just about three or four meters. Yet another incredibly tight cross by these two guys. Just amazing match racing between high-speed catamarans here in San Francisco Bay. See the arrows on there, those are superimposed. That gives you an idea of how strong the current is, the flood current coming from underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. This is an America's Cup moment for Oracle, and it looks like they're dipping. Ainsley calls for a duck. Oh, how close can it get? And after the duck, the both bows nose dive and slow the boat down. So the Americans have filed a protest against the Kiwis. I have to be honest with you, Todd, I have no idea why. And no penalty. Umpires say no penalty, so sail on. Now they're out of the current. Oracle's in the in the better part of the cone right now. They're out of the current. They might be able to have a piece of Emirates Team New Zealand on the way back out on starboard tack, but they have to be able to be more agile tacking. This has been their downfall for this entire event is tacking. And they get the lead back. The cone is dominant at that at this stage. Gary, the current in, up in there is must be almost going the other direction. Almost be a back eddy to a to an end situation behind Alcatraz Island. Yeah, Ken, and not only is the current more advantageous underneath the island, for some reason there's a little bit more wind under there, helping the right side of the course get these boats in a lead. So right now New Zealand's going to the better place. And the wind is picking up. We started the race with the wind at about 12 knots. It's now up to 13 and a half knots. I agree with Oracle. At this stage, they could have done two more tacks, gotten a little bit more current relief, but that's when they've gotten in trouble, Todd. That's, they try to do too much. Now it's trying, time to leg it out and try to let the boat do its thing. 20 to 21. That way. Slow here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
can almost cross. We're not so the Americans with a lead that is down underneath, holding right now at 48 meters. We go back on board Emirates Team New Zealand. The challengers, both boats traveling at about 19 knots, which comes at roughly around 21.9 miles per hour. And they are heading upwind back towards the Golden Gate Bridge. We're a little lower, a little faster. This is OK. Square for 250. You got him in a good lockdown here, do not beat tags. Okay, he's setting up to take got a look to Lewis. He, he, he won't cross. Happy to protect right though. There you go. They, they don't think Oracle's gonna cross here. Even though they're showing ahead on the head behind line, they don't think they're gonna cross. We're about to see yet another pass. Tactician Ray Davies stand on the left side of the boat, number 10. Okay, Team New Zealand's doing what's called a dial down here right now. They're reaching off and heading straight at Oracle to force Oracle to do a worse duck than they normally would. Really aggressive match racing move by Dean Barker. And a protest coming from the Americans. They think they went too far on the dial down. We'll see what the, uh, what the uh, umpires think. You're just allowed to dial down to about 60 degrees true wind. Beyond that, you could be in trouble. The action on the San Francisco Bay. It is day four, race number six of the America's Cup. The Americans with only one win, the Kiwis with four win. If we tacked. He could probably and this was just moments ago on the cross between the Kiwis and the Americans. Ray Davies set this up early that he thought they weren't going to they weren't going to cross, and they just pointed at him. They made them do an overly aggressive turn down to avoid the right away Emirates Team New Zealand. Really good match racing, aggressive move by Dean Barker. Is this Sailing's version of chicken? Uh, I, I think that's exactly what it is. As a matter of fact. So the Kiwis now have the lead, 28 meters and growing, but are the Americans in a better position, Ken? This is a tough one. I think the Americans, if they don't have a cross here, then all of a sudden it's 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 the normal Kiwi stretch. They've gotten into attacking contest off that left side. I don't think they had a choice. They had to attack for the boundary anyway. All of a sudden the Kiwis are showing their dominance when it comes to tacking. AC live line getting an idea of the disturbed air coming off that big wing of the Kiwi, sending it right back to the Americans. Gary, interesting that Emirates Team New Zealand decided not to cover in that situation and allowed for a little bit of a split here. Well, I think they want to get out of the current. It's as simple as that. I mean, one of the things we're learning here is that the whole shape of New Zealand, which is much fuller and rounder, is able to do a better job going through the tax as we're watching now. That very fine hole that the American boat has, they're not able to keep the momentum going through the tax. That's the difference we're seeing right now. Aggressive racing coming from the Kiwis, and we'll give you an aerial view of that last cross. And as Ken draws this up, what exactly are they trying to force the Americans to do? Yeah, the dial down by, the, by Emirates Team New Zealand, you couldn't see how far. They went from a beat to a reach, which means they sailed away from the breeze a little bit, forced Oracle to do a much wider turn to avoid them. Here it is you, on virtual eye. That's right. Watch New Zealand. They're going to take a left-hand turn and play chicken, just like you said. They're going to force Oracle way up high to do a radical turn down that typically gains you about another boat length during the maneuver, and that's about how much they crossed by. Back to live racing action, and almost like clockwork on leg number three, the Kiwis are starting to stretch their lead over Oracle Team USA, the defenders. Yeah, they're going to force Oracle into attacking contest here, Gary. They know they know their advantage. They're just going to keep pinning them up against the, the boundary on the left side of the race course and force them to attack because they know that's their Achilles heel. You know, Ken, watching these guys here, I think the combination of Slingsley and Ainsley, they haven't made any tactical mistakes here. It's really tacking ability and a little bit of boat speed that's making the difference. However, let's keep in mind that Oracle is going a little faster downwind, and we have a long run to the finish line.
There is Ray Davies, number 10, the 41 year old from New Zealand. Not only is he a tactician, but they've got him working as a grinder as well, maybe the most active man on that Emirates Team New Zealand boat. Doing a little of everything. He's got to keep his head out of the boat, though. They're going to tack on Oracle again. They're going to keep forcing them to that short side boundary and make them tack because they know they're a weak tacker. This is this is brilliant strategy right out of the textbook, exactly what they should be doing. Setting up again here. Going every time, boys. Take it on. Yep. Oh. You hear them saying they're gaining every time, and just to go to your point, Kenny, uh, the crew doesn't enjoy it right now, but if they get the victory, they'll be happy that they did it. But this is just hard work, tack after tack, especially going upwind, and the Americans are just getting covered. A bit of a broken record here right now, but the Kiwis just slowly pulling away. The more they tack, the more they're going to pull away, and, and, and they know it, we know it, Oracle knows it, unfortunately. Going all the way, Jimmy. It's a good puff in there. They you hear Ben talking about a big puff in there. They're looking for anything at this stage. They're looking for pressure out there too, Gary. And with this left-hand shift, it's not unheard of. Uh, it's not unheard of to get big left-hand shifts off of the shore front, Gary. Well, there, those left-hand shifts just aren't there at the moment. It's very light out here. Light. We're we're only a couple uh, hundred meters away from them right now. The big deal is the current. The current is increasing. Uh, the flood current's coming in stronger and stronger, so New Zealand is a little bit at risk being out in the middle of the bay right now. Maybe a little gain to handle. A little gain to Oracle, and the reason is the current is less along the shoreline. Same again. Nine tacks each on this upward leg three of five, and it's the Kiwis with a five boat length lead. Remember, they trailed by nine seconds, or 12 seconds, excuse me, after mark number two, nine seconds after mark number one. All right, the million dollar question, Kenny, what can Oracle do to get out of sequence, to find some pressure, to do anything to get back in this race? Boy, oh boy, I need to hand that one off to our tactician on the water because they've been forced into the narrow side of the race course, again, completely playing into the strategy of Emirates Team New Zealand, which is the better maneuvering boat. They've done, ex on New Zealand, they've done exactly what they needed to do Oracle's tacking a little better, though, Gary, I think, than we've seen in the past. They're not losing quite as much as they have in the past, keeping it closer. Yeah, what, one of the reasons is the wind is so light. I mean, if you're Oracle, Kenny, you just got to stop tacking. If they get tacked on, do two quick tacks, and that's it, and try and stay on straight line. I mean, let's not forget, there's a long downwind leg. Oracle was a little faster in this light step downwind, and the whole game right now is to keep it close. Through the beauty of virtual eye, here you see the number of tacks, and that is a lot of, that is just a nightmare for the grinders, isn't it? It's a nightmare for the grinders, and it's, an or, uh, it's a nightmare for Oracle, to be honest. This is just exactly the strategy that they didn't want to have. But it's not like they've chosen it. They've been masterfully pushed into this position by Team New Zealand. New Zealand's game here is, Kenny, is to somehow either sit on Oracle's win or, better yet, make him make two extra tacks just before the mark. Rob Woodell, number 11, Chris Ward, number 7, doing some great work. There you see the lead on the course, almost 200 meters to the key. We say get ready to hit the next mark. Grinders are earning their paycheck today, Todd. Heading him this time, and we're on lay right gate. Heading him in about 20 seconds, guys. This is where you put your nail in the coffin, Gary. This is yep. that last yep. tack. If, if Emirates Team New Zealand yep. can make it in one and force Oracle to do two more attacks, the lead will double, maybe even triple. Either two attacks or actually sit on their wind all the way up there. Either way, it's a big game for the Kiwis. Three line here, 
on his helmet. That's 56-year-old general manager Grant Dalton out there doing work. Two-time gold medalist Rob Waddell gasping for air there. That guy only just won every single rowing, rowing contest there was in the world for about 10 years, and here he is desperate to breathe. Pretty amazing. And then Chris Ward, number seven, he's also gasping for a little air, too, an indication that they're tired after so many tacks. Todd, this is the punishment that Team New Zealand was looking for all the way. They, they set this weather up, weather mark up, about 10 minutes ago. Same as this for the rounding. And in the light air, here comes the payoff pitch as Emirates Team New Zealand hits mark number three first, and they have pushed the lead to 200 meters over the Americans. Now look for the acceleration by the Kiwis. Big trim now. Seconds. Yeah. That last tack, that last yeah. setup where they got on top of Oracle, gained them another 200 plus meters. Just uh, really, I can't, I can't emphasize enough. Great job by Ray Davies setting this whole thing up to really put the nail in at the last, at the last minute. And let's not forget the Americans had a 12-second lead at the last gate. Here they are at gate number three, and the lead has gone up to over 44 seconds for the Kiwis. Jimmy Spithill and his crew trying to find some magic, hoping for a mistake from Dean Barker and the Kiwis, something they have not done very often. There you see the distance as the Kiwis make their way back down towards the shore in the city of San Francisco, and then it's a right-hander. And Gary, they are just running out of real estate, the Americans. New Zealand doing it exactly right, staying right in the center of the course, going downwind. I mean, I like the tactics aboard the American boat, although this jive they went through was very sloppy, good poles going down in the water. They don't have a card to pull. This team's got to regroup very quickly if they hope to win the second race. Big wind shift here out on the water. The wind coming far off the land here, so they're only sailing a direct course down toward the leeward gate. That helps the lead boat, New Zealand. Hey, Simeon, a little bit further back on the board. Simeon. Simeon, just a little bit further aft if we can on the board. Just sucking down a bit. Go, Wick. We're actually lined up. Not short term well, but long term a bit better than them. He's just going through that light spot now. Yeah. Okay, we've got a light spot coming. Light here, guys. spot coming. And that's lower here, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the voices of Tom Slingsby, Todd, and, and Ben Ainsley in the back, desperately looking for any sort of puff that can try to reel in the Kiwis who have a pretty dominant lead at this stage. A little bit softer from now. Not much, but. Going. Okay, softer here. There is four-time Olympic gold medalist Ben Ainsley. 
he's looking out, in the horizon and looking for answers. There's really nothing a tactician that can do here at this stage. The boundary is just to the left of them. Open race course in front. Competitor kind of down the road. I mean, Gary, I, I, I don't see a rabbit to pull out of a hat here right now if I'm Oracle Team USA. Yeah, very, very bad luck for the American team to have this big wind shift so they're sailing directly for the mark. I mean, the best thing they could do is learn from this race. They have to race the second race and think ahead. What did we learn here to help us the next time around? So they are halfway down leg to leg number four. Then it's the big right hand turn to the finish line. And the Kiwis, again, looking so good, so in control, making no mistakes. And the Americans left grasping for straws because the Kiwis have been nearly perfect in this race. And once again, Kenny, it's leg three that is the undoing of the Americans. It, yeah, uh, uh, unreal. I guess, well, at this stage, it's not unreal. It, uh, it's a trend when a trend just it's becoming reality every time they turn that corner they got to be dreading that leg you know what so you gotta say it's just more more simply really fast up win and these guys yeah, have kind of been in denial for a little bit gary yeah sorry Ken. i was just going to say as an aside here it's only blowing 10 to 11 and these boats are going 29 knots yeah. almost three You'll times the speed of the wind that in itself is pretty impressive Listening to the calm voice of Dean Barker, 40 years of age, out of New Zealand. He has won an America's Cup. He would like to make it two America's Cup victories and take the cup back to New Zealand. Much harder jiving in this lighter stuff, Todd, in this lighter air. It's hard to stay up on the foils. There just isn't enough momentum, enough apparent wind build up over the foil, uh, the foil above the water to, uh, to make the foils below the water work very well when you get down to those slower speeds. Okay, good pressure coming on now, Jerry. Go, Trent. Check the inside boundary at daylight. Stop it. We've got 50 seconds and a minute the other way. Could be right spot, Ray Davies telling us they're almost right, in the center up. of the course. 50 seconds, one direction, one minute the other to get down to the mark. Yeah, they had no problem at all. It's just so hard to imagine the way this race started with the Americans getting the whole shot, the Americans leading downwind to mark number two, and actually leading about halfway up mark number three, and then it all went the way of Emirates Team New Zealand, and now the lead is just enormous. Well, it, in, these, in these games, in these races, it's kind of all about getting in the other guy's head, too. Clearly, right now, Jimmy Spithill is in Dean Barker's head off the starting line. That's several losses in a row, and this one was kind of a crushing loss. But maybe in the back of Dean's mind, he's just thinking, we're going to pass him anyway. Let's not screw this thing up. You know, let, let's, not, let's not foul out. Let's not do something silly. Let's not run into him. And the Kiwis ace in the hole seems to be leg number three because every time they have trailed the Americans on the first or second leg, they have gotten it back on the third leg. So here they are now set up perfectly for mark number four. It'll be a slight right-hand turn and then a short blast into the finish line for what would be their fifth win. And remember, the Kiwis only needed nine to take the cup, so they are more than halfway there if they pick up a victory now. So with a lead of more than 400 meters, the Kiwis bring it around the next mark and they will out head for the home line and another victory. And it has been an impressive race for that man, Dean Barker and his crew as we check in on the water with Gary Jobson. Todd, I just want to remark about the start. One of the reasons New Zealand might be so conservative, they don't want a collision. Their second boat's a long way from being able to sail, and it's not that fast. The Oracle boat is ready to sail, and it's pretty close in speed. So if I was New Zealand, I would take it very easy on that starting line. You can't afford any collisions out here. As the Americans get to mark number four, still over 35 seconds behind the Kiwis, 
And barring a major mistake by Dean Barker, which we have not seen during this entire campaign, it will be the Kiwi striking again. Everybody talks about number 11, Rob Waddell, that he's smiling around the race course. No, he is just begging to breathe at that stage. That's, that's what he's thinking. And the good news, bad news scenario for everyone out there is they get about 30 minutes, and then they get to do it all over again. And if you're 56-year-old Grant Dalton there with the six on your helmet, you better hope someone brings you a nice energy drink or something to <laughs> nibble on to get your energy back up. The day so far belongs to the Kiwis as they pick up their fifth win of this regatta. Well, with the size of that victory, Kenny, you might say they made it look easy, but as we listened in, those guys absolutely were suffering out on the boat. Well, you saw Dean Barker do two things that were telling. A, a, kind of a sigh of relief right before the finish, and then shook his head after the finish. He's thinking, I got to get off the starting line. <laughs> And as they cross the line, the deficit will be 47 seconds behind the Kiwis and the Americans unable to capitalize on the lead after mark number two. So they make the tactician change, but it does not yield the results that Russell Coots and Jimmy Spithill were looking for. It's now time, as you put it out, Kenny, for a quick regroup. Little tap on the shoulder from Jimmy Spithill to Ben Ainsley at the end. Nice job. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And Gary, help me out here. I'm not sure there was anything Ben Ainsley could really do uh, much better on that, except for maybe stick a couple uh, big engines on the back of Oracle. Yeah, I think the only tactic you could have used there was almost to do a double tack so you're trailing with him just to keep it close for the downwind leg. That's the one tactic you could have done. So Dean Barker and Emirates Team New Zealand make the traditional flyby. And you can see just how light the wind is as they are just coasting by for the fans to get plenty of photos here who have made their way to AC Park. Normally the wind builds in the second race. Maybe that will help Oracle Team USA, but so far the Kiwis have shown they can sail in light or heavy wind. We now go on board with Emirates Team New Zealand. Their tactician, Ray Davies. Ray, congratulations. You didn't get the start. You didn't get the second leg, but in the end, all that counts is you get the win. Yeah, that's right. No, we um, a little out on our time on distance there and sort of just gave it to the Oracle boys in the pre-start. Um, you know, we just have to work on that. And uh, yeah, downwind they sailed well. Uh, didn't really give us an option, but we got a split at the bottom, which is pretty important. And then we just started chipping away from there. Obviously, the boys on board are just really um, attacking the boat well, and there's a lot of tacks, a lot of uh, hard work up that beat. It was a pretty steady breeze. There wasn't um, much difference side to side, and at times we made little gains with pressure, but uh, we just kept gaining in all the tacks. So, yeah, it was a good race. Hey, Ray, take us about halfway down that run, and you're behind. Are you already looking for a way to get a split at that at that gate? G give us just an idea of your your mindset as you're coming down, downwind and actually behind the other guy. Yeah, definitely wanting to get a split, for sure, because um, the gates are pretty square, and uh, the bottom part of that cone's pretty even, so the real gain is until uh, a little bit further up. So you want to have a split. And uh, we felt there's a little bit we had a bit of pressure offshore, so we're happy to mix it up with the jibes. And uh, the moment they didn't match our jibe, we knew we were going to be able to get a split at the bottom. Um, and just had to try keep it as close as we could. And each time the boat to the north or up towards Alcatraz was gaining each time, and uh, we were able to make the last tack into Alcatraz, which gave us a little advantage from there on. And, uh, that small advantage, you can put the squeeze on and make it pretty tough for the guys behind. Hey, Ray, I'm just wondering on the start, are you being conservative because you're worried about a collision or having a problem with the other boat on that starting line? No, we'd rather smash them in the start. Um, no, giving it our wall in the start, we're not trying to be conservative. We'd rather 
be ahead from the beginning, it's a lot easier. Ray, we appreciate your time. We'll let you get ready for race number two. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. See so you later. Emirates Team New Zealand with now five wins, just four away from taking the cup back to New Zealand as the boys try to get some nutrition in and try to load up on the energy. Same situation over at Oracle Team USA as we're able to now speak with their helmsman, Jimmy Spithill. And Jimmy, it's hard to say it, but it's that leg number three that seems like the Kiwis have some kind of turbo boost in their boat. Yeah, they've got some wheels out of the mark. That last gate, you know, we uh, boys did a great job on the start line, and uh, Benny and Tommy had a great run. And they were just able to claw their way back in front of us, unfortunately. Jimmy, I assume your tactician did okay that race. Any any comments about uh, Ben's job? Yeah, Ben did a great job. I mean, both he and Tom had great communication. You know, they were just able to uh, really to get ahead of us there. So uh, look, that's that's racing. We've just got to regroup and uh, get prepared for the next one. Well, you certainly seem to be going pretty fast downwind. Is there any way to maximize that to get further ahead down at that second part? Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot. I thought the boys sailed actually a really nice run. You know, they took a couple of shifts or a couple of tough decisions, but I thought we uh, we handled that well. And look, we're just going to go out there. The head's clear. We can't change the last race. What we can do is go out there and try and get another win. So that's what we'll be focusing on now. Jimmy, thanks for your time. Best of luck to you and the boys. Thanks, guys. So there is the scene in San Francisco as we get ready for race number seven, day number four, with the Kiwis just four wins away from claiming the cup. Conditions look fantastic. Wind is picking up, peaking at 17.2 knots, but holding steady at about 16 and a half knots. Jimmy Spithill, Sir Van Ainsley, and Tom Slingsby trying to work their magic and get the Americans a win. The Golden Gate Bridge, one of the most iconic shots in all of San Francisco, but right now everyone is focused on the water. Can the defenders of the cup get a victory and push the Kiwis, especially on leg number three? That is the key. The Americans do have poor entry, so they will have a 10-second advantage getting into the start box. And the question will be, do they play the same tactic this time, knowing that Dean Barker's probably not going to fall for the block on the hook? Well, it's all about that timing. Jimmy Spithill did it beautifully in that last start. He, he went back in a position and at a time that really took options away from Dean Barker. Let's see if he can do it again. Maybe better out of here. Strong flood current, the boats are going to want to work on the windward end. That will be advantageous at the start. So Spithill just a little bit late getting in, does not fully utilize that 10 seconds, but the Kiwis late as well. It seems so obvious, Todd, but it's really difficult to nail these things exactly at the buoy, exactly at the time you want to want to be there. Okay, you're on the right line here. 90 seconds away from the start as we check in on the water with Gary Jobson. Todd, I like the fact that New Zealand's giving a little bit more separation this time around. That should help them out. Hey, hold. He's checking underneath. We are two over right on Jimmy. 15 to kill for the line. Only 15 to kill for the line, according to Ray Davies on Team New Zealand. Interesting that you can see where sometimes the tacticians' comments or Ben Ainsley's comments are very different from what Kostecki is in this pre-start. I like New Zealand's position. Being the winner is going to be very helpful on his first leg. So coming up on 35 seconds, Kenny, and this time the Americans are much deeper, lower in the box. 
have they given up a prime position to the Kiwis? Well, I think there is time and distance now. This will be a reasonably even start. There's really no no way that they can hook, I don't believe, from this position. This is going to be an even start. Something that Oracle has shown that they have boat speed on this first leg, Some, they can make it stick. And with 10 seconds to go, both of them point towards the line here for race number seven, day number four of the America's Cup. for Emirates Team New Zealand, exactly on the gun. So the Kiwis get the better start, but not by much, and the disturbed air heads the way of Team USA. Boat speed contest right now. Can the Kiwis get over the top of Oracle and give them wing wash like in race one, and it looks like they've done it. Zealand, the first to mark number one. They have the advantage. What will the Americans do to try to counter the speed of Emirates Team New Zealand? He's gone. And the Americans seen that Dean Barker was setting up for that early jive. They decided to go first. Ken was with a smart move. Well, he has to go. He has to, This is OK, creating a little split right now. You actually want to get out of the other boat's way if you think you're faster. They had a really good jive on Oracle there. And so let's see if they can set themselves up into position to get down over the top of Team New Zealand. Get pressure coming back on you now. Just fantastic boat speed contest right now. Let's just hope the Batmobile here that Oracle Team USA is a little quicker on this run. That's what they're thinking. All their supporters are thinking right now. I can tell you that. Traveling at about 36 knots. That's roughly 41.4 miles per hour. 35 seconds. I think we'll cross, but uh, well, we should be set up to match. He's all yours, Let's go back and look at the start one more time, and this time Dean Barker, Ray Davies hit it almost perfectly at the line. Yeah, but Jimmy Spithill, he was looking over his shoulder, and he actually watched Team New Zealand pull the trigger before him. I'm very surprised he didn't turn down a hair earlier. A lot of times as a helmsman, you kind of match the other guy. He hesitated a little bit here at the last second before he pulled the trigger, and that was the, all the distance Dean Barker needed off the starting line. Taking a look on virtual eye, here was the start, what you're talking about, just that little dip. First cross of this race, and the Kiwis maintain their lead, and they will send back more of the unwanted gift of wing wash. Emirates Team New Zealand isn't exactly pulling away. But they're holding. If they can hold into this mark, they'll love their position going up on leg three. On the water, Gary Jobson. Gary, what do you see from your vantage point on the committee boat? Well, as you look at the two two uh, boats, notice that they have very different shaped forward sails. The jib, very wide and low on the Oracle boat, very tall and narrow on the New Zealand boat. So a different philosophy in that forward sail. There's the illustration, just exactly what Gary Jobs is talking about, Ken. As a man who does this for a living, who has the right sail? Well, this is completely different concepts is right, but it's really set up by, it's called a self-tacking jib on Emirates Team New Zealand. Many people think one of the reasons they tack so well is because the jib tacks automatically and they can use more guys on the grinding pedestals. Completely different philosophy on Oracle. They have to actually tack it manually every single time, like all of our conventional boats. Come on, boys. Go away, go away. Okay, we're going to go to the lay line and uh, do the leg split we can for the left. Copy. Sorry about that, John. Go away, go away. 
not the best jive on yeah. Oracle. We saw him yeah. splash yeah. down a little bit. You heard uh, Slingsby say, sorry for that jive. Not exactly sure what went wrong, but it wasn't their best. Ten seconds. Five. Stand by. Go 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 Here we go. The yellow line is the lay line, the direct line to the next mark. There you see gate number two. This is leg two of five, and this is not good news for Oracle Team USA. The Kiwis have the lead, and their strongest leg throughout this regatta has been the one coming up. Left hand split. Left hand split. Splitting left. Straight in, boys. Straight in. Don't win, guys. Straight in. The wind picking up to 20 knots, holding steady at 18.7. At gate number two, it will be Emirates, Team New Zealand, the challengers. Which way will they go? They opt off to go to the right and head closer to shore, and it looks like the Americans will follow. Now let's see if the Americans try one of these foiling tacks that they tried to pull off yesterday. This is a position where it could work. Just roll right into attack. Stand by. So on leg number three, the Americans are the first attack. Can they work out their problems on leg three and turn things around against the Kiwis? Happy with fast numbers. Yeah, 25, four, five, five. 25 knots. Well, the distance has actually come down just a little bit, Ken, so they're holding just under 90 meters. The Americans trail the Kiwis. The problem is, though, when they go upwind, they seem to lose so go much speed, and again, being dictated by the Kiwis and what they do. Yeah, if, if you didn't know better right now, if this was the first race of the series, you'd be thinking, man, we got a boat race right here. But history has told us, history has proven right now that this is where the Kiwis just kick it into gear. Let's see if it happens again. And the white line's coming down to the screen. You talked about that before. Explain that to the folks at home. Yeah, a little bit of a cone here. Not as much of a cone uh, situation that, that the, uh, the lessening of the current right in behind Alcatraz Island. It's not quite as big a deal today as we've seen in the past, but it was, it was slightly noticeable there uh, before we went down to this low shot. Negative heading him all the way to downgrade. The setup here is not great for Oracle, though. They're going to have to tack at the boundary. We're going to see Emirates Team New Zealand tack right on top of them as they try to clear out. Twenty seconds. So those blue triangles, that is current. The bigger triangles being stronger current. And there's what you're talking about, Ken Reed, the cone. Less current behind Alcatraz Island, which means less resistance going upwind, and it looks like the Kiwis are going to hold on to this for as long as they can. Well, it's like they're sailing on a conveyor belt. You know, that, that's essentially what tide, what current is. They're sailing on a conveyor belt. You want to, you want to sail on a conveyor belt that's going a little bit uh, slower than the other guy. Man on the water, Gary Jobson, how's the current for you? Well, the current's increasing and strong, and I like the New Zealand move. Stay right, stay out of the current, and just keep pushing the Americans back out into the middle of the bay. They'll continue to gain doing this. Alcatraz Island there on the right side of your screen, a place that no one wants to go except for sailors as they are looking for current relief. And it is the Kiwis on leg three of five, race seven, day four. New Zealand leads America five wins to one. Kiwis just need four more victories, and they will take away the America's Cup. You can see on these tacks, Todd, they've actually improved their tacks. They are getting that same look that Emirates Team New Zealand does. That weather hull pops right out of the water coming out of the tack. But like Gary reported earlier, they have so much less volume in the hull that's actually still in the water, it kind of digs in, a little submarining as it goes, as it comes out of, onto the new tack. Yeah. 
battery tank. It looks like it's a little light. Pressure was for sure tonight. Yeah. Man on the wheel, number 14. That is Dean Parker, 40 years of age. Just to his left is number 10. That is Ray Davies. And Ray Davies constantly looking back at where his opponent is and constantly looking on the water to look for pressure and better current. Now he's not checking, he is not checking. He goes straight. Boundary check anyway, yep. So Ray Davies, number 10, he's the tactician for the Kiwis. And on the right hand, the far right of your screen, that has been Ainsley, normally a helmsman. He is now the tactician working in concert with Tom Slingsby. You saw Ray Davies actually jump into the winger, wing trim position. They started to think about tacking, and then they stopped. And then they were going again, and they stopped. Obviously, that's his position when they tack, and he had to probably sit there trimming the wing a little longer than desired. And once again, if you're a fan of Oracle Team USA, the defenders of the cup, the kryptonite has been exposed yet again. Leg three. They were trailing by 80 meters. They now trail by 210 meters. Just seconds. simply more of the same. Better boat up win. Emirates Team New Zealand. And for the folks watching at home, is this a case of the Kiwis have a better boat or they're better sailors on the water on the upwind leg? Well, sailors help create better boats. Let's put it that way. I mean, it's a team effort and how, why a boat is fast or slow. Uh, obviously, at this stage, you look at them and you say they didn't do something wrong, or do something right, sorry, in their preparation anticipating a situation like this and, and this incredible dominance up win by Emirates Team New Zealand. Davies is right now. I'm, speaking from experience, when you're this fast, it's really fun being a tactician. Just really relaxed tone to his voice. Yeah, we can tack when you want. Yeah, whatever. Go for it. Whereas there's going to be a little more tension back on Oracle right now. Meanwhile, the Iceman, the man with number 14, the skipper and helmsman, Dean Barker, really does not change expressions whether he's winning or losing. So attack comes from Oracle Team USA. There you see those beautiful big wings on both of these boats. And fortunately for Emirates Team New Zealand, they are just a little bit faster, much to the dismay of the Americans. For more on the wings, we check in with Gary Jobson. Jabo? Well, if you look down on uh, New Zealand or Oracle here, notice the platform under the wing. It's very narrow. And that platform underneath is very important. It creates an end plate and you can actually get extra power increasing the sail area. But notice how narrow that is. And when we get a chance to look at the New Zealand boat, it's much wider. I think the Kiwis have done a better job configuring their platform to get an end plate effect, which gives you more speed. You are watching race number seven of the 34th America's Cup. The Kiwis lead the day and lead the overall. Can the Americans come back and make a race of it? Yeah, I agree all the way in here. And there is the distance between your leaders, Emirates Team New Zealand and Oracle Team USA, the defenders of the America's Cup. And this is going quickly as to script. Once again, leg three going back up win. The Kiwis just seem to have extra speed. Happy with 24s in this left hander. Say no normal targets, 
Emirates Team New Zealand with a 5-1 to one lead on the Americans in wins, and they need four more victories, and they will take away the America's Cup back to the great nation of New Zealand, and they look very good here in race number seven. Kenny, Todd Harris, Gary Jobson, Ken Reed here in San Francisco, and the story is played out yet again. It is leg number three that has been the Achilles heel of the Americans. He won't lay from there. New Zealand literally flying upwind, almost foiling here as the breeze has picked up to 18 nautical miles per hour. You can see the lured hull on the left just about lifting up. This boat is really going fast. This is all part of a playbook for Emirates Team New Zealand. At this stage, they're going to try to just minimize maneuvers and make sure they keep Oracle pinned to the short side of the racetrack, which is the left side, over towards the city front. Just so smooth on these tacks. They, they, they really make it look easy. They're going to go up to the what they're calling the left-hand side lay line. The boundary shouldn't come into play before they get there. One more tack in, and it's going to be tough to catch these guys, Todd. If you've been watching our broadcast, and how could you not be, this is almost like Groundhog Day, though, yeah. because every day, leg number three, whether the Americans have the lead at Mark II or not, this is what seemingly always plays out on leg three. The Kiwis find an extra gear, make one less tack, and they're gone. Just looked to me like Dean Barker got tired of getting beat on that start, you know, and, and all of a sudden, these, you give these guys a lead, and if there's one thing they've proven, since the beginning of the Louis Vuitton series is they don't give up leads ever. Nice gains up there. Hey, right gate. Forty-five to boundary after the mark. Beautiful shot of the Golden Gate Bridge, and there is 56-year-old Grant Dalton. He's known as Daltz. He's the general manager of Emirates Team New Zealand. And Gary, not many guys would go out and shot for a 56-year-old grinder, but he certainly has paid dividends. Well, and as important as grinding, the fact is he's a spiritual guru of the boat, big brother. Anybody gets a little nervous, Grant Dalton's the guy that fix it. I talked to him yesterday, and I said, I hope you're going to stay on for all the rest of the races, because I know you like to take the second race off. And he said, well, until you told me that, I was going to take a race off. But it's so important for him to be there. The only race they've lost and was when he was not on the boat. Traveling at 22 knots, 25.3 miles an hour. And once again, it's the Kiwis, the first to gate number three. And the lead has ballooned to over 400 meters as the Americans with this shot are nowhere in sight. He's still on the tank, no problem. So as Dean Barker and Emirates Team New Zealand speed away, the Americans can only look, and they still have 200 meters before they get to the gate, and that clock will continue to run, meaning they will continue to be in the rearview mirror of Emirates Team New Zealand. At gate number three, the Americans finally make it into the three boat length circle. And now the good news is, Ken, they can choose wherever they want to go. The bad news is they trail Emirates Team New Zealand for the second time today in excess of 50 seconds. Really not much you can do at this stage. It's, it's uh, This is a tough, tough spot. Being in a slower boat upwind is just never fun, and especially in such a world stage like this. You talk about the money spent, the time spent, the technology involved, and the Americans just seem to have no answer 
for Emirates Team New Zealand and the speed they exhibit, especially on leg three of this five leg race. Really good on that bow, yeah. Lower same than him, big gains. Back in San Francisco for our friends watching in the Southern Hemisphere, this is great news. Emirates Team New Zealand is ahead of the Americans by more than 1,000 meters. And they are traveling at more than 35 knots. Fresh off a victory in the first race today, Dean Barker, Ray Davies and company are plowing ahead, looking to pick up their sixth victory, which would leave them just three short of winning this year's America's Cup. We've talked in the past about perfect races and whether you can actually even sail a perfect race. They're going to look at this one right from the starting gun and say, man, there wasn't much we could have done much better if you're a if you're a Kiwi at this stage. A rare moment for these guys to catch their wind as they have an enormous lead on Oracle Team USA. So it's play it safe mode now for Dean Barker and Ray Davies. And wow, you got to talk about the course and how it's been so favorable for New Zealand, Gary. It, uh, would you say it's skewed? Well, right now it's almost a direct course going downwind, which helps uh, New Zealand out taking away the passing lanes. But one of the things we're right behind New Zealand is how much they change course depending on the wind. They get a little gust of wind, more pressure, they bear away. A little lighter spot, they come up, altering course 20 to 30 degrees at times. And there you see it on virtual eye, Kenny. We're looking at the wind blowing in as well as the current Alcatraz Island talking to what Gary was was mentioning there about the course. Yeah, there's there's certainly been a little more southerly breeze which comes off the land, off the shoreline of San Francisco and creates it creates more of a one-sided racetrack. Yeah, starboard tack downwind is considerably longer than port tack and when you take away these passing lanes downwind for the boat behind, that's never a good thing. So basically what you're looking at is a drag race between New Zealand and America and without having to make any jives or any turns going downwind, that man, Ray Davies, can plot a court course almost directly to mark number four, and it's a straight shot. Straight shot is a tactician's best friend. You know, Todd, we were talking about Grant Dalton earlier. The first cup that these guys won in 1995, Peter Blake was the CEO, the, the famous 25. Peter Blake. He didn't do one race. He was on board just like Grant Dalton. He didn't do one race in that whole series, and they lost that race. Grant Dalton, CEO, this time around, doesn't do one race. That's the only one they lose. I don't think there's a chance Grant Dalton gets off this boat again. You know, Ken, I, when I was uh, over the compound yesterday, when you walk in the front entrance at Emmer's Team New Zealand, there's a picture of Peter Blake, a reminder of what a great man he was to all members of the team every time they walk through that door. Peter Blake, a winner of round the world races, a winner of the America's Cup. One of the great New Zealand sportsmen of all time, really. Still work to be done for Emirates Team New Zealand and that man, Dean Barker, but they are inching closer to taking the cup back to New Zealand. And at this point, you'd have to say, well, clearly they're the faster boat out there. They're better on downwind, they're better on upwind. They've kind of got the starts a 50-50 proposition, but when you're this fast, Kenny, they can split the starts with Oracle Team USA. You know, the one thing I, I think the Oracle program never thought of is, is this boat-on-boat, -boat, hand hand-to-hand combat, what that would be like trying to attack this boat. Gary brought up a great point this morning. It's the amount of volume in the hulls, and that clearly has allowed the Kiwis to attack better. And it's just it could just be the fatal flaw of the design team. Emirates Team New Zealand immediately goes to foils as the Americans have yet to make it to mark number four. They have closed the gap, but they are still trailing by more than 800 meters. On the final leg of the last race of the day, Emirates Team New Zealand sailing clear in 39 knots, or about 44, 45 miles an hour. Wow. This is just 
This is a huge win. This is this is devastating for the Americans and for the Kiwis. Just more of the same. Ken, it makes me wonder: Do you go back to John Kostecki for Saturday's race, or do you uh, stay with Ben Ainsley? I'm not sure the tactician had much to do with this one, Gary. So after four days of racing, it is an absolute Kiwi whitewash. They lead it 6-1 as they pick up their second win on the day. Dean Barker and company, congratulations on a masterful job. This time they didn't get the start, never trailed for all five legs, and their lead ballooning up to over a thousand meters. Even though they won the first race of today, Todd, you saw kind of a disgusted look. These guys, you know, these guys are perfectionists, and Dean Barker did not want. That was a kind of a humiliating start in the first race today. He sure made up for it in the second race. Just do our flyby now so we can keep going. Jimmy Spindle talking about the flyby. They'll go by and wave to the crowd, but the Americans will finish in second place for the second time today, more than a minute behind Emirates Team New Zealand. So a change in tactician yields no better results for Oracle Team USA, the defenders of the America's Cup. Once again, the Kiwis own the day. What really stands out here in San Francisco is how many Kiwi fans there are around. I think they're flocking in. The, every jet airliner leaving Auckland Airport right now is heading for San Francisco Bay at this stage. Well, there's only four million residents of that island nation, but I think more than half of them have made their way to San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, for all good reason, this is great sport. It's huge sport, obviously, in, in New Zealand, and uh, and good for them. Well, as the saying goes, speed kills, and that's exactly what's happening in the 34th America's Cup. The Kiwis have the speed. Talking to the designers before this event started, the edge, the kind of the thinking among on both teams was possibly the upwind edge was to Oracle and the downwind edge is to Team New Zealand. It shows how quickly things change when you have a development class like the AC-72s. And the body language says it all for Oracle Team USA as they try to figure out what went wrong and how they can get it right. Meanwhile, for Emirates Team New Zealand, it's another day at the office as Dean Barker gets rehydrated for his big interview here. Dean, uh, that's about the most work you've done today. You boys look awfully sharp, and this time you nail the start. Yeah, I was, uh, the first one was just a shocker. You know, just, uh, I was half asleep all the way through that whole start, and, um, you know, we, we paid for it. And, you know, full credit to the guys for just digging it in. You know, it was never a sort of a lay down and uh, let, it, let it go away in the first one, and uh, we just stuck with it, um, stayed close and took our chances up one. The, um, yeah, that one I was sort of a little bit more uh, conscious of making sure I didn't let the guys down and uh, it all worked out pretty much how we hoped. Um, so yeah, very, uh, very happy with the day. Hey Dean, obviously you guys are dominant upwind. It's becoming clearer by the race. Is there something that you can pinpoint? Like, is there something on, that you guys have done that just all of a sudden clicked and you knew that, hey, we, we got an extra gear? Oh, I could be these pie warmers on the back. Um, <laughs> I think uh, they're obviously doing something. Well, Dean, you know, you're going pretty darn fast up when, as Kenny just alluded to. But down when Oracle at times seems to have a little edge on you, what can you do between now and the next race to improve that downwind speed? Well, you know, the, you, you can't be good everywhere, and um, it's a trade off. And, um, you know, you'd have to say that Oracle, you know, they, they look stable and, and pretty fast, you know, obviously reaching and downwind and, you know, we sort of feel we can hang in there enough. Um, but, you know, you've got to pay a price somewhere and maybe they, you know, the price is uh, upwind for those guys. So, um, you know, we could, 
we could try, try and improve our downwind, but we're pretty happy with our all-round package. So it's just uh, racing the boat well, and then if we can be in touch, then we can um, certainly race them upwind. Dave, thanks for your time. We'll let you restock the pie warmers. We'll see you on Saturday. We will, yeah. Thanks, guys. You are looking at the Challenger. Emirates Team New Zealand. A lot of people have asked, what are those things on the back? Dean Barker jokingly refers to them as the pie warmers. Now, I've yet to see a Twinkie back there being heated up, <laughs> but they do do something a little more technical than that. Well, affectionately referred to as pie warmers, that's for sure. These are actually asymmetric foils that clean up the what's called a wing vortex from the lower wing, where it meets the end plate on the deck. All right. Now, how about for us real people? What does this really mean? It just means it makes the bottom of the wing actually work better. There's lots of accelerated wind that comes off the bottom that, of the wing that they're trying to capture. And these asymmetric boxes are actually doing that. They're just cleaning up turbulent breeze off the back of the wing and making the wings more efficient. There is the view from the back of Emirates Team New Zealand looking back at Oracle Team USA as we go on board. Award-winning coverage throughout the day in both pitcher and sound. We'll also have animation courtesy of Virtual Eye and, of course, Live Line bringing you all the lines in the course and showing you exactly where they are here in the San Francisco Bay. So that's the look on board Emirates Team New Zealand. Here are your defenders of the cup, Oracle Team USA. We've got them covered as well. At 25 from it. Hey, you fucking bastard. And before we get to the start, let's check in with Gary Jobson down on the water. Todd, with this wind building like this, both boats have their smallest jib, the forward sail up. So they anticipate it's going to be a very tough race with those small sails. They hope that helps keep the boat under control. Take a little wing off, does. 15. So the port entry comes to New Zealand, which means they get to enter the start box first, a 10-second start. Not really an advantage in the race, but it allows them to decide where they're going to go in positioning. And Ken, we've seen this before. They're late getting there by about five seconds. It's just so hard to judge. It's, it's very easy for us to sit here in the comfort of our chairs and say, wow, they're late. But to, to go from non-foiling to foiling and to nail it to the split second is not an easy thing to do. Remember, the, the reason that 10-second jump is allowed is just to avoid really, really potentially dangerous closing speeds between the boats. We saw this the other day on Thursday. Actually, the two boats playing chicken, and the Americans had to give way, and that's something the organizers do not want to see. So this is a this is a different tactic. Oracle has waited a long, long time before they've actually jive to go back towards Emirates Team New Zealand. A huge gap between the boats right now. This is a very different strategy from Oracle. Interesting strategy playing out on the water. Gary Jobson, do you like what you're seeing? And why do you think Jimmy Spittle's going this route? Well, I like the way the boats are staying apart. But the game here is to be at the leeward end of the line. That's at the bottom of the screen because that current's sweeping out. You want to be closer to that end. Less than a minute to go before we release the hounds, and you want to hit that line at perfect zeros. We've seen in the past races, you want to be at the top of the screen and angling down. But today, with the current and the way the tide is ebbing, where would you like to be, Ken, at the line? Well, for sure, the top of the line always will give you a better angle. Let's see where these guys uh, decide to start. Jimmy Spithill coming in for a potential last minute hook. Aggressive move this late in the game. And race eight is underway in San Francisco. Gary, Jimmy Spithill tried to simply do too much. Tried to get too cute in that start. Just allowed uh, Dean Barker to sit there, block, and hold him off. Kenny, the patience by Barker really paid off. Too much aggression, bad move by Spithill. And the consequences, disturbed air off the wing of Emirates Team New Zealand. So the Kiwis will hit mark number one first with a sizable lead. Now the question is, can the Americans reel them in on the downwind leg? 
think you just really saw the pressure on Jimmy Spithill just to simply try to do something. Take it as an individual and just try to make something happen clearly didn't work. Speed's almost identical, and it's going to be the Americans that decide to peel off first. Nice job. Not only they peel off, but they actually make a poor jive and slow down quite a bit. It's just amazing how used to the fact that we've watched, we're, we're, we're just used to the fact that boats going down the bay at 38 knots. In, just incredible to watch. 38 knots, 43.7 miles an hour. Kiwis have the lead and it's growing to nearly 100 meters. Remember, their lead at mark number one was three seconds over the Americans. The wind speed out here right now, Todd, is four knots under the limit. It's going to be no problem getting this race in. Okay. Stand by to drive here, guys. Whenever you're ready, Jimmy. Jimmy Spittle at the wheel. Ben Ainsley just off to his right. Boy, these boats are kind of glued to each other, though. There's really not much in it between the two boats right now. Very even. That's a much better jive than the one they first pulled off. Yeah, bottom out at about 30 knots. That's typically a good jive for these guys at this stage. So the Americans have actually closed the gap now down to 70 meters. Sweet checking on the water, very rough water indeed, and Gary Jobson. Well, I'll tell you, I like the way Oracle Team USA is going through that water. It is choppy down where the boats are, a little bit from us right now. They're going well. USA, strong. Remember, Jimmy Spittle, and made the changes, Kenny, taking out the spine of the bowsprit. Wise call? Well, they, they took off the, the forward end of the bowsprit, which is only there to put up a code zero or a larger sail on board the boat in lighter breeze. Obviously, they're not expecting lighter breeze today. They're getting rid of every bit of weight and windage they possibly can. There's that stubby little spine right there. What it also does, though, Todd, is it brings the wind instruments. Those are the only wind instruments. That little vane brings them back closer to the boat, which puts them in slightly more disturbed air. So they may get uh, worse wind readings while sailing in this configuration. You okay, regardless for us, guys. Right out of the textbook. Stay between your opponent and a mark. New Zealand doing exactly what you should do tactically. And New Zealand still gaining slightly on all these jibes. Every just a little bit, not much, but a little bit every jibe. This is race number eight, day five of the 34th America's Cup. The Kiwis have the lead, six wins to one. Three more victories by New Zealand, and they will take away the America's Cup. Oracle jiving early here. Team New Zealand jiving for the ley line. They're going to try to do one less maneuver. Oracle might be setting up for a split down here and one more jive. A tough maneuver so late in the run. Well, if you're Oracle, you definitely want to do the other gate, Ken. At mark number two, it's New Zealand out in front. They had a three-second lead at mark number one, and that lead has more than doubled now, as the Americans do, in fact, split the course with the Kiwis, and now the all-telling leg number three and upwind. Pretty 
soft here, about a 22 knot target. They tack. Good pressure to get ahead of us. Yeah, get into this pressure, Jimmy. Here you see there's not a lot in it right now with current. There's pretty reasonable current, that outgoing current from side to side. So there's not a whole lot in it. We, today, you notice we haven't mentioned the dreaded cone behind Alcatraz Island. There's no such thing. And you see the Americans, they came out of that last maneuver. They were touching speeds right around 24, 25 knots, which is roughly 27 or 28 miles an hour, three or four knots faster than the Kiwis. Come on, here we go. Americans have gotten much better at tacking. Notice that weather hull, the hull that's on the high side of the boat, the right-hand side of the boat has popped out of the water right in the middle of the tack. That's that's just reducing drag. Clearly, they've learned something from Team New Zealand during the week. First cross of the match. The Kiwis are clear and away, but it's gotten a little bit closer. Remember, the lead was up to 114 meters. It has now been dropped down to 75 meters. Not a bad sign for the Americans at this stage. They kept it close on the first set of tacks. Keep it going. Come on, you want to see. 24, 25. I'll press, I'll press, I'll press. Keep going straight. Keep going through. Happy here. an idea of just how physical these AC-72s are. Team New Zealand with the lead, and the Americans are coming fast. Gary, the Americans did a nice job creating that split, and all of a sudden they get out of phase going upwind automatically. Really good job being aggressive on that run and getting the split at the gate. Yeah, and Ken, one other thing. The wind is actually coming off the shore when they get close to the San Francisco city front, and they could get a good port lift making them sail a direct course to the winner of mark. So the USA has a real chance to gain right here. And there's the wind shift. They take it right there. A lot of chatter on board this boat today, you know, kind of a, you get a feel. Well, first of all, there's more chatter when it's windy because it's just a little more hyped on board the boat. These guys are into it. They, they have not gotten demoralized. They are still fully engaged. And the good news for the American fans, the lead is now down to 53 meters as we see another cross in the middle of the course here on leg number three. I tell you, these guys are going to be right alongside by the time the Kiwis come out of this tap. This has been a really good comeback by Americans on their Achilles heel leg. So Oracle Team USA performs another tack and they split away from the Kiwis. The question is, can the Americans mount a comeback here on leg three in San Francisco? Gary, this is something we have not seen for this entire regatta. The Americans making a charge on leg number three. This is normally when Dean Barker and the Kiwis distance themselves. Well, I really like the fact they use the opposite gate. They're out of phase. And this left side of the course where the USA is, the wind's just a little bit more favorable in direction, and the Americans are taking advantage of it. But Ainsley, the tactician, is doing a really nice job here. And the anticipated cross does not come about as Dean Barker decides it's a good time to attack. 
But look at the speed of the Americans. And at this point, the Americans have overtaken the Kiwis. Well, by, just by a tad, the Kiwis put themselves in the right position there. It's called a lee bow attack. And you have to be way ahead to actually pull that off. But the fact remains, the Americans, not only aren't they losing on this leg, they're slowly ticking away at the Kiwis, something we absolutely have not seen this entire series on an upwind leg. Okay, and the curious thing to me here is they, New Zealand knew the Americans are gaining on the left side of the course. Why not switch sides and get over to the south side on the San Francisco waterfront? Well, here they come. Easier said than done sometimes in these catamarans, but they came back quick this time. I just think the Americans are staying in the middle of the race course, not getting themselves pinned to that left-hand edge like they have in the past. This is a huge moment in this race. This next cross is a big cross. No, the other thing, Kenny, is that Oracle Team USA is actually sailing through the water faster relative to Emirates Team New Zealand. That's the first time we've seen that on a winter leg. We could see another hunt, hunting move here right now. Starboard Tacker could be hunting, but right now Oracle looks like they may. Oh, they popped off their foils there at the last second. Goodness, that was a little, that was a break they did not have to have. So it's all about the tax, and that has been really the Achilles heel of Oracle Team USA, unable to perform it quickly going up win. They, they may, were making gain after gain. Uh, here's, a, here's a Lee bow. It gives them an opportunity. They're getting closer and closer and closer until one small, tiny mistake. It really shows that it's just the tiniest little thing that's going to be, that's going to make or break this race. Doing the right thing here, they tack away. Don't don't put yourself in a bad spot to get slow. As soon as somebody leap out you, you tack away. Well, Ray Daisy certainly figured out that the left side of the course was doing well for the USA and now has that advantage. But the great thing here is that when you start catching up like Oracle, your crew gets more excited and it makes the New Zealand crew a little nervous. Maybe things aren't as good as they thought they were. One thing is certain, we have not seen this on leg number three, a extremely close race. The Kiwis right now going through the water very quickly, but only about 20 meters ahead of the Americans as they get set up to hit the next mark. It'll be mark number three. And remember, this is just a five-leg race, so one and a half more legs, and this race will be over. Oracle will now have the starboard tack advantage again. They're, they're, they're attacking better, and it just looks like they're going quicker through the water all the time. They, their changes have made a difference here, Todd. Bottom line. He's going pretty well down there. Keep in mind, on the run, the boats are so even in speed. If Oracle gets ahead at the mark, they could easily hold them off and take the race. You heard Ray Davies there, Gary, say he's going pretty well down there. I haven't heard that phrase come out of Ray Davies to the entire event. As they come together, Oracle USA has the right of way here on starboard. Uh, New Zealand almost capsized. Oh, oh my gosh. Got attack, got attack. Got attack. Keep going, Hoka. Oh, back, coming back. Coming back. Come back. Oh, New Zealand had the right of way there. Goodness. I think not only that, but New Zealand's going to get a penalty on them here right now. They almost flipped this thing over. My goodness, that's incredible. So the protest filed by the Americans, the Kiwis just happy to have their boat back on the water. That is a rattled Dean Barker there right now. There's no other way about it. That was an incredible turn of events. And a penalty on New Zealand. Port Starboard against New Zealand in the middle of that near faithful uh, flip over. Well, it's a vote on go penalty. So New Zealand's already behind. The penalty's already gone away. But Oracle Wayne Marie. Well, here it is one more time, Kenny. What went wrong for Dean Barker and his crew? Uh, their, their, their wing didn't pop, so their wing has popped the wrong way. It has not actually gone over to the new side until right there. Their wing did not actually tack. It's just amazing whether that's a hydraulic failure or a human failure. We're not going to know, but watch. They're on port tack right now. The wing is on port tack, and it never actually pops. It stays on port tack through this whole maneuver. 
just acts like a wall instead of a wing. And the windage of that wall almost put the boat over. Here it is on board. Maybe the most dramatic footage we have so far. Emirates Team New Zealand puts it up on that left side hole, and it just doesn't come back. Hydro, hydro, hydro. Keep going, hydro. Todd, I think you hear, you hear hydro, hydro, hydro. That means that they don't have the pressure in the system that is needed to actually maneuver that wing. If the pressure isn't there, the wing won't pop. It's one of the features of this Team New Zealand wing. They didn't have the hydraulics necessary to control it. At gate number three, it's the Americans with their biggest lead of the race, almost 200 meters. Jimmy Spithill and company now head back down win and then head for home, hopefully holding off the Kiwis and picking up a win. Boys, I'll tell you what. The, the speed and agility we've seen with Oracle this leg, there's a lot of there's a lot of airplane tickets being changed for Monday and Tuesday right now in San Francisco. And a rattled Kiwis crew, despite leading six to one, have to make this rounding very cautiously. And now they'll try to track down the Americans who are often running as they make their way to the finish line. So the chase is on. Dean Barker in unfamiliar waters as he is looking at the back end of Oracle Team USA speeding away and seemingly making all kinds of great maneuvers. And Kenny, I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that Dean Barker had himself in that position or the fact that he saved the boat from capsizing. Well, I, I think you see, Gary, even that, that weather mark rounding right there by Team New Zealand was pretty loose. I think you're seeing a rattled team right now. Uh, these guys got issues. They're, now they're completely off their foils in the middle of a jive. These are just mistakes we have not seen from Emirates Team New Zealand. And the lead continues to grow for the defenders of the America's Cup. Team USA, 700 meters out in front of the Kiwis on leg four of five. They trail six to one, and Dean Parker right now is dealing with a very rattled crew in a very unfamiliar position. Here it is one more time, the moment where they almost put it over. Well, it was tough Lee Bao. They were close anyway, even in a perfect world. But, but the hydraulics did not work for some reason, and the wing didn't pop. And when the wing doesn't pop, it goes from an airfoil to a wall, to a break. And, and it just almost flipped the boat over right in front of our very eyes. So Oracle Team USA out in front making fantastic maneuvers. They've made a few small adjustments to the boat. And right now, Jimmy Spithill is gaining confidence by every meter sailed. Gary, what a momentum change. This is, this is absolutely incredible. You know, Kenny, I'm just wondering, with uh, New Zealand getting nervous, suddenly Oracle's going fast, closer in every tack. That crew was a little bit rattled. I don't think it was a mechanical error. I think it was a human mistake that happened right there. And the big question now is, if you're Team New Zealand and you lead 6-2, to two, do you play your provisional card and maybe postpone the second race and say, guys, we just need to take a break because the Americans have already played theirs. They are out of cards, but the Kiwis still hold one. That's a, good, that's a very good question, Todd. I don't think it's in the Kiwi mentality to ever take a break. They're going to want to go back at him. You see a little smile from Dean Barker there right now. I don't think they're going to ever stop because of sailing. They might stop if they have a, something broken. Well, the wind right now, Todd, is about 16 knots. It's actually gone down three or four knots. So they're not going to be able to use the wind to take a break. If there's a mechanical problem, New Zealand does not want to sail the next week. They'll pull the card. No mechanical problem. I agree with Ken. They'll be out here for race two. Okay, 15 seconds. 
What a huge shift in momentum. Just to bring you up to speed, the Kiwis have six wins, six points. The Americans just have one win, but no points, and that is because they were docked two points. So in effect, it's six to negative one. Now, if the Americans could win two races today, Ken, it would make it 6-1 on points, and that would change the dynamic of this thing completely. Well, I, I think what we see, the biggest point is, is <laughs> you're on Oracle right now. You have hope for the first time in many days. The speed that they showed and their tacking ability upwind, quite simply, is something we just haven't seen before. Austin, Aerial view of Oracle Team USA as they continue to speed through the water. New Zealand clocked in with their fastest time, which was 47 knots or 54 miles an hour. And the Americans looking very fast as well, 44.6 knots, which is right around 50 miles an hour as well. All right, Gary, the big question is, are the Kiwis fit to race in the second race today, or are there issues, do you believe, on that boat? I, I think there are issues, not only with possibly the wind, but they're having trouble with their poor dagger board getting it down. And let's not forget, Grant Dalton wasn't on the boat when they lost the first time. He's not on the boat now. Big mistake. At mark number four, it's Oracle Team USA with a huge lead. They trailed after mark one. They trailed after mark two. But on the third leg, the Americans turn the tide on the Kiwis. And as New Zealand was almost capsized, the Americans now are putting the hammer down. Todd, for sailors around the world, or at least in the United States, fans of Oracle, fans of the America's Cup, this is an exceptional turn of events. I think a lot of people just want to see a little more sailing. This changes the dynamic so greatly if the Americans could keep this momentum in race number two as Emirates Team New Zealand hits the mark and they now make the turn for home and they are just happy to have the boat sailing right now because that's about as close as you can get to a capsize as Oracle Team USA approaching 39 knots or 45 miles an hour. Jimmy Spithill and crew will bring it across the line and Oracle Team USA will win the first race of the day. Todd, you heard Jimmy Spithill right there. Absolutely pinpoint the biggest difference. Awesome tax. That's why we don't have Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Great Sorry about that. Sorry. Just thought he was on my time. That's all right. Because I had a 50 back. Jimmy Spithill, Ben Ainsley working out their communications. We'll hopefully get a chat with them, but this is something we have not seen as New Zealand suffers their worst defeat in this regatta as they finally come across the line some 52 seconds behind the Americans. The big question now is Emirates Team New Zealand fit to sail in the second race. Quotes of the day back there, Todd, on board Oracle, where Jimmy's turning around to Ben just saying, sorry about the start. It was a timing issue. He got super aggressive. He, he just he just tried to do too much too late. And Ben Ainsley being a good psychologist slash tactician. Hey, it's all right, mate. No problem. We'll be fine. Rome Kirby on the right side of your screen. Get himself some energy drink, some food, as the fans continue to pour down to America's Cup Park. And for one time in a long time, the American flags are out and they've got something to cheer about as Oracle Team USA has got to feel pretty good about themselves as they take the next 20 to 25 minutes and head back up towards the start. These guys have been taking a lot of heat over the last several days and, and I think just the sound of the cheers is, is music to their ears at this stage. Absolutely beautiful day here in San Francisco. 
and Mother Nature has been kind with the wind. It's holding right around 19 knots, our wind limit closer to 22 knots. So over the course of the next 20 minutes, we'll keep an eye on that. Gary Jobson will continue to feed us reports on what it's doing, and we can hopefully get another race. And now, Ken, if you're the Americans, you most definitely want to race again because you feel like you found a weakness in the Kiwis. For the first time, they have hope. I mean, that, that beat was like nothing we have seen. And it shows the vertical learning curve in these boats. They're still learning so much every single day. We've said it before, but, but we'll say it again. They get better every day. It's the new technology, new concepts, new theories, smart people in the back room figuring it out. Well, let's go back and look at the moment of the race. And this is where things all changed for Emirates New Team New Zealand. The Americans had the right of way, and the race was really 10 meters apart. And as they came together, Ken, you pointed it out, it was maybe a hydraulic situation, but the wing did not pop. And that wing all of a sudden turned into a great big wall. And with the wind blowing almost 20 knots, this is what happens. When we listened really closely, we heard hydro, hydro, hydro. And the reason they need hydraulic pressure is to actually make that wing pop. The wing does not just hinge on its own in the middle. It has to have hydraulic pressure in order to move. And you see it slowly but surely moving to its proper new tack. Then compound it with your, you fall off on port tack. You, you fouled the other guy at the same time. You see the wing is actually the wrong way there. And it just acts like a break and pushes the boat over. It's amazing that they actually didn't flip the boat over. I was going to say, how impressed were you with the save by Dean Barker? Here is one more time. How would you like to be on that one hole over there that's going to be about 25 feet in the air? Well, all the guys on the bottom hole are still grinding. They're trying to create the hydraulic pressure. They didn't stop grinding, and that's actually the, that's the moment that saved Emirates Team New Zealand. They didn't stop trying to find their pressure. Well, we're grateful to be able to send it down to the water now and where skipper and helmsman Dean Barker, who did a masterful job of putting on a little bit of a show as we go on board one more time and take a look at that video. It was absolutely amazing. Dean, first of all, how are you and how is the boat for the second race of the day? Yeah, we're all good. Um, you know, it was a bit uh, disappointing to let a lead go. Um, the Oracle guys started a good race. They chipped away up the beat. I think they should have got nicely um, in phase and, and just sort of... Uh, got back into us and we had that one um, one tack which uh, was just a routine tack but uh, we didn't get the hydraulic and uh, you know, in these things if, you, if the wing doesn't tack and the boat does it's, uh, you're going to end up on your lid and fortunately um, you know, we managed to get the hydraulic working pretty much about as late as you possibly could um, you know, fortunately the boat came back up and uh, there's no, no collision with the other guys Dean, they're showing a little bit of speed, like speed and agility, maybe in their tacking that we haven't seen this whole series. Yeah, they, you know, I think um, when you're in phase and uh, everything's going well, you know, it's, um, you know, there's opportunities to make gains here, and they've uh, they stepped up. You know, they always are going to, and uh, you know, it just means that we've just got to keep um, improving ourselves. So, you know, the guys will bounce back well. We'll um, we'll have a, you know, a little bit of a regroup here and um, be ready to go for the second race. Do you have any problems with the dagger board or the wing mechanically? Uh, no, no, none, none at all. Um, no, if we had any issues, you know, we'll do a thorough check as we cruise back up here, and if there's any issues, we'll, we've almost got that postponement card, but um, right now I think we've, you know, we'll be good to go again. Dean, thanks for your time. We're glad you're all safe. We'll see you for race number two. You will. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Dean Barker, the skipper and helmsman for Emirates Team New Zealand, giving us the moment of the regatta so far as they put it up on a huge angle. And because he's so good at what he does, able to bring it back. But the man that wins the first race, Jimmy Spithill and his crew, Tom Slingsby, Ben Ainsley. Wow, that was one heck of a race. I guess, Jimmy, everyone wants to know, what did you find on leg number three that allowed you to turn the table on Emirates Team New Zealand? Well, the boys just saw the fantastic boat. I mean, we've been putting in a lot of work to try and improve our boat and the tacks and our upwind speed. Our short team worked all yesterday with the design and engineering team, and I think we've taken a great step forward. Jimmy, that was that was a beat like we haven't seen before. But take us to a moment where you think that a, another boat is going to not run into you but fall on top of you. That was pretty dramatic, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I was actually about to duck them and try and hook them, and then. 
you know, I saw them just keep going and I just, you know, we just quickly got set up for a crash attack and, uh, I mean, man, I thought that was very, very close to going. Well, it certainly was a nice race, but Dean Barker's won two starts now in a row. What are you going to do different this time, Jimmy? I'm going to win the start, Gary. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jimmy, congratulations on the win. We'll let you get regrouped with the boys. We'll see you for race number two. Thank you. It's a really square line at the moment. We've got 1.7 knots of tide here. Yeah, yeah. Taking us over, <laughs> so... So here's the situation. The tide is going out. The wind is blowing in. Ken, we are set for some great racing. The air is nice and clear, and the sun is out. That was great conversation with Ben Ainsley and skipper Jimmy Spithill. Really, Ainsley's job here is to provide information to give Jimmy a better idea of where he wants to position the boat on the starting line. That's exactly what he was just doing tide and and what is going on in the race course which end of the starting line is a little favored toward that first mark so for oracle team usa the defenders of the america's cup we go over to the challengers and that is emirates team new zealand Dean Barker in his normal position, and there's the rest of the crew and the pie warmers on the top right of your screen. Very little chatter on board Emirates Team New Zealand, so they are getting about work. Port entry today, the boat coming in the left side of your screen will be the Americans. They get a 10 second start into the start block. Now, really, it's no start advantage, Kenny, on the actual course. It just gets them into position earlier and they can determine which way they want to go. Absolutely. Oracle is, is thought by the, by the skippers, by these programs, to be in a slightly better spot to have that 10 seconds jump to get into the box. That allows them to set themselves up, position themselves a little bit better for the final run to the start. So at 210, it's Oracle Team USA making their way into the entry box or the start box, and the Kiwis will follow behind. So here we go with 145 before they hit the start line. We've seen this before from Emirates Team New Zealand, Ken. They went deep into the box. Do you think the Americans do the same thing? Well, this is a little more traditional. The Kiwis jive back and try to close that gap between the boats as tight as they possibly can, just to put a little bit more pressure on Oracle and when they actually turn. He's going straight. He's going straight. He continues. He continues. That's the voice of Ben Ainsley just giving skipper Jimmy Spithill a bit of a play-by-play. And with 1.10 to go, we check in with Gary Jobson dead on the water. Todd, there's going to be a big battle to be at the leeward end of the line. That's at the bottom of the screen with this ebb current. That's where you want to be on this start. We need a kill for the line. And you see that Jimmy Spithell has positioned Oracle right down on that yellow line, on that left-hand lay line. But Emirates Team New Zealand still going for a hook. This is a risky play by New Zealand at this stage. So low in the box, right by that yellow line. Have they gone too far, Ty? Oracle is, they're way down in the box beyond that yellow line. They're really going to be slow getting back up. Getting three on the box. We are still slightly slower. Killing two on the box. Killing one. Oracle is totally in control at this stage, Todd. They've done a really nice job of finding that ley line and dominating this start. Lovely work. He's up. Four clear. Four clear. 
So the all clear is given. Race number nine is off. They have no want or need to go over the starting line right now. Oracle might actually just stay here and get New Zealand really slow before they take off for Mark White. Great move by Jimmy Spinell. A masterful job by Jimmy Spithill, Ben Ainsley, and Tom Slinsby as the Americans have the lead as they head to mark number one. We're Good pressure might be the understatement of the day as the Americans are clocking in at 41 knots. That's 47 miles an hour. And it's Oracle Team USA with a lead of four seconds around the first mark. Same speed. Yeah, nice of it. A little bit soft, but in general, but not too bad. Happy going straight. Good pressure here. Really good pressure here. Yeah. Probably match it over. So Oracle Team USA leads it by almost 100 meters. You heard Ben Ainsley saying good pressure, happy to stay here. Meanwhile, trailing in a position they have not been in more than a couple times during this entire regatta. The man with the 14 on his helmet, that is the skipper and helmsman, Dean Barker. Ken Reed, the big question is, what does he do now? Well, we, it's funny, we just haven't seen any even starts so far. One skipper has completely dominated the other in every single start so far. Now, here we go, Dean Barker's a little bit behind. What are they gonna do? Do they have the pace to get it back? They've always had speed up win before to rely on. Do they have it today? Yep, but I'm happy to drive. So the Kiwis stay in line with the Americans. The lead grows to 112 meters. We check in on the water and Gary Jobson. The race at this point is very even speed-wise, but it's the setup for the lured gate. New Zealand being behind has got to do the opposite gate of whatever Oracle's going to do. So his tactics, once again, are at a premium. Leg two of five here in race number nine. The Americans have the lead. Let's go back quickly, Ken, and take a look at the start one more time. And you made a very good point. The Americans were in no rush to get across the line. There's no need to actually go over the starting line here. But, you know, it, it was really interesting. I was nervous that Oracle was way too low in the starting box to even get up to the line. Obviously, they're way ahead of the game. Plenty of, plenty of time, plenty of distance to get up there. They just stuffed New Zealand. Wait for the di uh, speed differential, wait for New Zealand to slow down more, and then they can speed away. It's just a difference of acceleration at this stage. Really good classic match race move by Jimmy Spithill. So Spithill pins Dean Barker up at the top, and there you see the lead approaching 175 meters now. And the big question is, Gary Jobson, how soon is Ben Ainsley looking to that lured mark or gate number two and setting themselves up? Oh, I think he's been thinking about it the whole leg and looking at what the other boat. It's a little bit of a strategic game right now. And from my eye, looking at it, I think Oracle Team USA is sailing a little bit faster and gaining. Here comes Wade. One and in left. One and in left, boys. Now comes the time where Team New Zealand has to be thinking about that split. It's been so effective at this bottom gate to go around the other side of the gate for the boat behind. They got to be thinking ahead and trying to create that split, which will probably cost them one more jive in the big picture. And with this ebb, Kenny, you want to be in the middle of the bay because the current is stronger. The water's deeper, stronger current. That's where you want to be. seconds. That's 20 seconds to a ley line, Todd. Pretty calm boat right now when, where you're on Oracle. Bensley, ben Ainsley is clearly in charge, and he's just working on ley lines into that bottom mark. The problem here, if New Zealand wants to split, they'll have to do two jibes to get to the left gate. These foiling jibes, though, Gary, they cost so little in VMG or the actual distance toward the mark 
they can get away with two jives, but this last maneuver is a tough one. This is a hard one to pull off and pull off effectively if you're Team New Zealand. At gate number two, Oracle Team USA, the defenders of the America's Cup, make the move, and their lead has grown. Remember, it was just four seconds at the first mark, and will the Kiwis split? Yes, they will. But, man, Oracle had pace on that run, Gary. That's as big an opening as we've seen on a first run of any leg so far. They've gained about eight boat lengths, Kenny. Big, big improvement in downward speed. Now let's see what about upwind. So from four seconds to 18 seconds is now the lead for Oracle Team USA over Emirates Team New Zealand. The Kiwis, this has been their strength, leg three of five, and this has been really the problem until the last race for Oracle Team USA. Interesting dynamic for the Americans. Can they technically have three helmsmen on board? Jimmy Spithill, Tom Slingsby, and of course, Ben Ainsley. But like we said in the pre-show, Slingsby is really, I think he's the key to communication here. Ainsley's not, he's not a born tactician, but, but Slingsby is keeping that communication loop open all the time as a go-between between these two guys, between these two really good sailboat racers. Once again, perfect synchronization from Emirates Team New Zealand. Dean Barker rarely gets rattled. His man, Ray Davies, the tactician, quietly working with him as Barker continues to survey over the water here on the upwind leg. The Kiwis have six wins. They need three more, and the cup is going back to New Zealand. Todd, these guys tacking maneuver. I, I can't underestimate, I, I can't understate how much it's improved in the last five days. They've gone to school on Team New Zealand and how they're tacking the boat, how they're controlling the dagger boards, the hydraulics, the wing, everything in unison, and they're figuring it out. And they're sailing the boat. They're actually foiling up wind now, right there. But they're using a skimming technique now that Team New Zealand has been using for a while. They're not digging that bow in the water and displacing, trying to create a longer hull. They're actually skimming. Or here, they're actually foiling. Uh, it's very similar, again, to how Team New Zealand was really beating them up around the race course in the past. Stuart Hall is out of the water a good chunk of the time now. They've just cha completely changed the philosophy as to how they're sailing the boat upwind. Look how choppy it is on the right-hand side of the course where the Americans are. And that just means better current out there, Gary. That, that kind of middle right-hand side is where it's called the dumping ground area. And that's always known as the most amount of current as there is on San Francisco Bay. You can look at the body posture of Dean Barker and tell that he's losing a lot right now. The right side of the course, where Oracle Team USA is, is better. More current, and the wind, Ken, has really shifted to the right here, a little bit different than we've seen over the past week. The USA continues the game. The Americans now lead by more than 300 meters. In the past, leg number three has been their downfall as the Kiwis have been known to pounce on them. And as Ken pointed out, somehow, some way, over the course of the last three days, Oracle Team USA has learned to tack much better, and it certainly is showing here in race number nine. Lovely tack, lovely tack. 14 knots on us, man. Good work. Oh, I'm those high speeds, you know? Say again? I just took a little Sound of the boat, Jimmy. Sound of the boat, mate. They tack back. Oh. Going straight. 
You heard you heard uh, Ben Ainsley say there, lovely tack, lovely tack. Actually, it sounded like Jimmy was starting to explain what he did different in the tack, and Ben just said, hey, sail a boat. <laughs> Meanwhile, work continues for Emirates Team New Zealand, sitting on six victories, needing only three more to take the cup away from the Americans. There's Lucky Grant charm Dalton. back on there. Grant Dalton, 56 years of age. The two races the Kiwis have lost, Gary, he has not been on the boat. Is there any chance he does not stay on the boat? Taking a look up the course here, Emirates Team New Zealand, just no match for Oracle Team USA as we continue on leg three, heading for the winner mark. You're tough on here. No pressure. Very nice. He takes back. Same, same here at the moment. Constant communication on Oracle Team USA, and this is something, Ken, that we were not hearing two or three races ago. Great communication. Obvious great speed. They've actually opened up on a beat here. Full credit to their design engineer and shore teams for changing gears. And then the sailors, of course, for changing modes on how they're sailing this boat upwind. A completely different boat than what we've seen in the past on this leg three. You know, Ken, when you think about the guys, Tom Slingsby, and to Ben Ainsley, they won their Olympic gold medal sailing single-handed. They're not used to talking to anybody, and they seem to be enjoying it working together. This is leg three of five, race number nine, day number six of the 34th America's Cup. The Americans have seized the momentum. Yesterday, there was just one race contested because of high winds. Race number two was taken off the board. And it is now the Americans who seem to have figured out the bay. These guys on Oracle have to be really excited at this stage. They, they were down and out in this event. You know, Dean Barker, though, has been calling this. He said, we, he said they knew they were going to come up with little triggers, little little bits that was going to help them go faster. And sure enough, the Americans and the, and the Oracle compound has figured out how to do it. Go to lay line, right hand gate here. Ainsley saying going to lay line, right hand gate. Now, late in, the, late in the leg, it's time to minimize maneuvers and just simplify. No more need to cover, just simplify. As the wind continues to blow, the Americans are out in front by more than 300 meters. We have to start thinking about the second race of the day, which would be race number 10 of this regatta. And Gary, from your position out on the water and your knowledge of this area, do you think we see a second race today or does Mother Nature blow it out? Well, Todd, right now we're only two tenths of a knot under the wind limit. If they get around the next mark, the wind limit goes away. It's a five minute average. As for the afternoon race, it's going to be very hard to get it in if this wind continues to build. Those tacks by the, they're, they're what effectively looks like a roll tack. It's not a roll tack, but those of us who sail dinghies, it looks like a roll tack. One hole in, the other hull out, immediately it reduces the wetted surface by literally 50% and allows the boat to accelerate much quicker. Incredible change of events for Oracle Team USA. Pressure back on you now. And one thing we're hearing much more of, especially today, is more talking coming from Ben Ainsley. He is playing the role of tactician for Oracle Team USA. You've got to believe he's getting more comfortable every day. This is a new spot. That first day must have been pretty intimidating for him. But he's clearly getting better at it. I'm sure they're watching a ton of tape at night to help him just speed up the whole process. Should be fine on him, actually. 45 seconds to a shot. 45. 
So this race will stick as the Americans make the turn on gate number three. The wind limit goes away, and the Kiwis now in a very odd position for them as they watch the Americans out in front. And Dean Barker looking to work some magic here on leg number four. Can Emirates Team New Zealand make a big charge and get some heavy pressure, or will the Americans sail away with the victory? The lead has gone up to 33 seconds for the Americans over Emirates Team New Zealand here in race number nine. Gary, I'm curious, out on the committee boat, can you, how close did they actually get to the win limit in this race? Well, they were two tenths underneath as Oracle Team USA is only three boat lengths uh, from us, sailing down at 40 knots. What an impressive sight. Dean Barker scanning the horizon, trying to figure out where the most pressure is and the most favorable current here. Leg four of five. Meanwhile, it's Oracle Team USA clearly in control of this race. Okay, coming into more pressure all the time. Nice work, lads. <laughs> Team USA with a more than 600 meter lead Beautiful. on Emirates Team New Zealand. Hey, no problem at all. Good lead here. Just starting to finish. Just gonna get a little And Ken, if Oracle Team USA can hold on and get this win, their third victory, but their first point, what does this mean to the camp? You can't even, you can't overestimate the amount of enthusiasm that this program, and, and you never know, they could be onto something and it's just sitting back there right now in the, lab, in the laboratory creating the next big jump. You don't know, the vertical learning curves on these boats are still staggering. How much faster they go every day. These guys are onto something clearly. We take a shot of the body language on Team USA now as opposed to four or five races ago. It is a completely different story. Different boat. It's just a, it's just a different boat, a different team. It, it, just tremendous how they've, they've massaged a bad situation and created a good one. You know, it makes me wonder whether the New Zealanders will say, you know what, we're off the pace. we got to reconfigure. Maybe it's time for them to take their car and uh, not race the next race. And what Gary Jobs is alluding to is each team has a provisional card where they can wave off a race for any reason. Oracle Team USA did it earlier this week when they were just getting it handed to them. Jimmy Spithill pulled the card and said, we need to shut it down. We are out of sorts. They clearly have some kind of advantage. So they waved off the second race of that day. And that's a good question by Gary. If the Kiwis feel that there's just something missing and they can't match him, do they just say, you know what, we're done for the day, wave off the second race? Well, I I'm not totally convinced at this stage they're not matching them. I just think the Americans have sailed a really good race. They rounded the right gate, the correct side of the gate. They, they, they tacked on top of, they gave disturbed air to Emirates Team New Zealand at the right time. They found the best current on that beat. I think they sailed a really good leg. So if you're Team New Zealand, yes, your advantage may be gone, but I'm not sure you're down and out yet. Well, we saw Dean Barker win three starts in a row over the last couple days before the Jimmy Spithill turned the tide. That was a slam dunk on the starting line, and that started it. So the lead has now ballooned up to 700 meters. The Kiwis actually sailing a little faster at 36 knots or 41 miles an hour. Dean Barker still looking for a window of opportunity. He had his moment yesterday, maybe thinking the Americans might miscalculate this win and put themselves in a bad spot. excitement around the oh, USA oh, camp is this is what they thought they would see from day one of the America's Cup. I can tell you watching walking around America's Cup Park yesterday afternoon a lot more people were showing off their Oracle t-shirts than a couple days prior. I think <laughs> for sure. Straight into the finish. 
Well, if we go forward on the book, and it will look as though the Kiwis are still firmly in control of this one, if the Americans do hold on to win this race number nine, it will be six to one on the score. Now, for those watching at home, will say six to one, it's still a Kiwi whitewash. The Americans will have won three races, but two of those points were taken away by the international jury for a pre-race infraction. So the Americans not necessarily in this totally because they're still down by five as they make the rounding at mark number four. But Kenny, it's more the momentum and where they were three days ago to where they are now. Absolutely right. Momentum and all good sailors want is a chance. Give me a boat that just that just gives me a chance. And I think I'm a better sailor to make up for any tiny de deficiencies. These guys are good sailors and all of a sudden they think they have a chance clearly. Don't load the boat up unnecessarily here. As they ride the bucking bronco into the finish. You heard him call it out, don't load the boat up unnecessarily because, Ken, you know you've been in these waters, you've been on this boat. That thing catches a bad puff of wind at the wrong angle, it's game over. Yeah, it's, there's no reason to take a risk. There's no reason to have to just put the hammer down right now. you got a nice lead. Let's make sure you don't break anything, don't do anything crazy, and uh, live to see another day. the finish line the fans at america's cup park begin to cheer race number nine day number six of the 34th america's cup belongs to the americans Conditions are such that they do not even have time to wave to the fans who have been here for hours. There's business at hand and a small celebration now taking place. That's the world's fastest flyby right there. You better look quick. You better have your shutter speed pretty fast on your camera. Dean Barker and Emirates Team New Zealand now come in. They'll be well past 40 seconds behind the Americans as they hit the line. Not the best start for Dean Barker. He got a little aggressive down there. As we go back and analyze this one more time, Kenny, do you think that was the turning point of the race, was the start? Well, of course, absolutely. And, and Todd, this is actually, that, these are the events that we thought were going to determine this, this regatta. The start we thought was going to be crucial against two fairly even teams. It hadn't turned out to be that way so far with so many passes, more passes than any other time in the history of the Americas Cup. And but how about this speed on the course? The Americans completed that five legs in just over 21 minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> well, Jimmy talked about yesterday in the press conference, we can win races. We just have to go out there and start doing it. And now here they are officially on the board. Six to one in favor of the Kiwis. The Kiwis need three more wins and the America's Cup is theirs. The Americans though are now down to needing just 10 wins and the cup is theirs. Where you going, Pound? Poundage. How are we doing here, mate? Yeah, Jimmy Register looks great. Uh, minus two on staff and zero on board. I wouldn't touch it at this stage ever. So what the, they're talking about, uh, rake and cant probably to the rudders right now. It's actually a manual setup where they can tilt the rudders fore and aft. They would have all kinds of off the boat telemetry telling them what the pitch or the pitch and roll moment of, is of the boat, just like an aircraft. And uh, they don't want to make any changes. That's a good sign for Oracle. Got a glimpse of big Rome Kirby there. He's already taken his helmet off, feeling pretty good about things as they make their way back up to the top of the course. Right. Team USA and their helmsman, Jimmy Spithill, congratulations. Your body language looks a little different today. You guys may have just sailed the best race you've had this entire regatta. Yeah, what a fantastic effort by the boys. Really dug it in a very, very physical race. Benny and Tom did a great job on the back, but I tell you what, the boys in the engine room up the front just able to extend on every single move, so very, very exciting. Hey, Jimmy, taking, taking us back to the start. You got yourself really low in the box, down near that ley line. Did you change your instruments at all? Why, you were very confident about where you were in the box in what could have been a precarious spot. 
Yeah, we had a hard time yesterday with the software and what my eye was seeing. And then uh, yeah, last night, Philippe and the guys, we put a lot of effort in last night trying to tune it up and we, we found something that was going on. And we, I thought we had a great game plan today for, uh, for the start. And yeah, I mean, full credit to Philippe and the boys for uh, getting me back on track. Well, Jimmy, you keep telling us that you can win races and you're making believers out of all of us. Do you change anything here going into this next race? Not a lot. I mean, I think the boat's going great. Uh, you know, we're talking about jibs. We're right on the limit here, but uh, oh, the boat's going great. The boys are winding well. And also, I want to make a special mention to our shore crew. We had a failure just before the race. One of our shore guys jumped on board, repaired the boat, and were able to race that race. So, uh, full team effort, that one. Jimmy, what was your failure? Oh, we had a failure with the rudder. I think we hit something um, while we were practicing. And uh, Dan Smith, one of our shore guys, got on and got us through the race. So, uh, you know, the win's for him, really. Jimmy, thanks for your time. We hope Mother Nature cooperates and you boys can race again in the second race of the day. Thanks, guys. Jimmy Spithill, the helmsman for Oracle Team USA, doing a fantastic job and the enthusiasm clearly visible there as they get ready for the second race here on day number six. Tens of thousands of fans continue to make their way down to see the best sailors in the world here in the September showdown. And one of them, certainly Dean Barker, the skipper and helmsman for Emirates Team New Zealand. Dean, obviously not the way you wanted that race to go. The wind was up, but uh, you just couldn't seem to find a way to track down the Americans. What was going on? Um, well, you know, they're going well. You know, they've definitely uh, stepped up. Um, as, you know, I guess we all expected they would. Uh, yeah, it's hard racing. It's um, the breeze is on. It's uh, you know we got to uh, get off the start line um, as well as we would have liked, but it's difficult in those conditions with this, this much air and stuff to um, you know, to make much of the, uh, the, the starboard entry. So yeah, we'll look to do a much better job in this uh, second race this afternoon. Hey Dean, you guys really worked hard for that left hand side. What, what, did you want the pin or the left hand end desperately? It just seemed like you guys pushed really far down in the box to go for a hook or go for the pin. The problem with the air is if you get sort of uh, stuck above the guy killing time, uh, you, it's very easy to get uh, locked out at the weather end. Um, you've got to really drag the action off the ley line and. Uh, um, yeah, it just, you just, in the end, it's very hard to make it happen, you know, with the, uh, the time that you got. Dean, I'm just wondering, looking at the boat, do you feel you're a little slower here in these heavy wind conditions? About even, or if you get a good start, you'll be able to hold them off? Well, you know, we had similar conditions yesterday. Um, we felt uh, felt like, you know, we were going just fine. Um, you know, I think they got their bow clear today, and I think they probably uh, made a pretty nice little gain out of the, the bottom gate. Um, and so, yeah, it was always going to be hard for us to sort of peg our way back into it. Um, you know, they, they're going just fine. You know, they've uh, definitely found another gear in these conditions. Dean, the score is now 6-1. You still just need three more wins to take the cup back to New Zealand. What will be your message to the boys when you get ready for race number two? Oh, look, you know, we, we, you know, we know this is going to be a battle, and we've been saying that right from the start. It's, uh, it's not over until it's over, and these guys, um, you know, they, they're not going to let it uh, go easily. So... Um, you know, we know that we've got to keep pushing hard and just do what we do well. Dean, as always, we appreciate your time. Best of luck to you in the next race. Thank you. And that is uh, holding true the yellow line. If we peek over that, that would start the 15-minute clock over again. And that is looking good over the last five minutes. Now, the other thing to take in consideration is we will not start a race after 2.40 Pacific time. Right now, it is holding at 2.21. So we have about 19 more minutes, one more wind delay, Ken, and that could put us out of the window. That's right. And remember, the sample, that the delay is created when a sample is for 30 seconds over the wind limit. So that, that's what we need. We, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's touch and go here. There's no doubt about that. But let's all, let's all cross our fingers here for the next 10 minutes or so. Man with the white hat on is Larry Ellison, the man behind Oracle, the man really that has been the driving force for bringing the America's Cup here to San Francisco. He is the defender of the America's Cup. He gives the thumbs up to his squad, and uh, I think he could make room for another America's Cup win, couldn't he, on his mantle? I think he was giving a thumbs up to Gary Jobson. He was. He had a nice little hello there. But I don't blame him for being happy, really. They, these guys work hard. They had all kinds of changes. And uh, their shore crew, by the way, and design team's got a lot of Americans on it in the background working hard, and it shows. Let's just get a racing. 
No question about it. Oracle Team USA fresh off two victories in a row. And the score now reads 6-1. to one. New Zealand needs three more wins. And the America's Cup is on its way to Auckland. The Americans, they've got some work to do. They still need 10 victories, and they will hold on to it. You're only as good as your last race, Todd. So easy way to shut down this momentum if you're Team New Zealand. And if you're Oracle, keep it rolling, baby. Well, if you're New Zealand, you really like the fact you're coming in on the port side of the line. That should help them a little bit this time around. Now under six minutes to go. All right, Jabo, look into your crystal ball out there on the water. If you were Emirates Team New Zealand and you were coming in port entry, where are you going immediately? Well, I'm going to go as far away from the line as I can, get turned around, and make Spittle try and get the hook. The hook did not work three times in a row for Spittle, and as we saw in the last race, it didn't work for Barker. So make Spittle make the moves and just go straight for the line. Ken, are you surprised to see that many shore crew members on the boat this think, close to the race? I think they're just grabbing uh, the final couple shore crew members off the boat who, the pit the pit crew, you know, that, that would be checking all the systems on board the boat, checking carbon fiber parts and pieces, mainly the hydraulic system is my guess. So they're just getting the bags and the toolboxes and the guys off the boat at the last minute. So the flags are unfurled one more time and the countdown from five minutes is on. I still like the move for the two boats to just go directly upwind of the committee boat and sit there and block the wind for the next four or so minutes. And unfortunately, as large as it is and majestic, the Golden Gate Bridge will not block the wind. It actually funnels it down underneath coming in from the Marin headlands, and it just is like a funnel with that wind screaming underneath the bridge. Actually looking good go. here, Todd. We're actually, we've actually dropped a little bit. So we're looking solid for to keep this average. That, but it, it, again, it's only 30 seconds. You need it to be 30 seconds above the prescribed wind limit for this race. anywhere on the line. Midline favored. We heard Ray just say lured end favored. So that's the pin. That's the that's the end, the end of the starting line that has been so successful for the last few uh, races, mainly because of this ebb current. The ebb current versus the flood current completely changes strategy going into the starting line for these boats. Look at the acceleration. Just how fast Emirates Team New Zealand went from just sitting there having a nice tea and biscuit today are up and screaming getting ready to get in on the port entry and this will be race number 10 here on day number six Dean Barker on the left Jimmy Spithill on the right Todd it'll be interesting to see you know Oracle knows that they're coming in from the unfavored side this time let's see if they try a completely different strategy again I wouldn't be surprised to see Oracle stay really far away from Team New Zealand this time, not go for that hook and actually just try to do a nice running start from quite a, uh, quite a distance away. The start developed by Harold Vanderbilt in the 1930s, a time run. The Vandy. and now they make their way towards the line. They have a 10 second advantage to start on the port side and that is all for safety reason. And then the dance begins here. It's race number 10 of the 34th America's Cup. So the long layoff from race number nine is over, and now it is on. Emirates Team New Zealand with a port entry. Here come the Americans. Okay, buddy. 
So Dean Barker jiving back and looking for that low lay line, that, that left hand edge of the starting box when you, as they're starting to go back toward the starting line. This has been very common for the boat that enters the box early. Let's now, let's see what Spithill has up his sleeve. Yeah, he's on it there. Both boats are at least 20 seconds early for the line, so there's plenty of time for maneuvers. One minute to the line. Very similar strategy to the last time around. Everett's Team New Zealand is really protecting that left side. One below sailing lane. We're just below sailing lane here. Very aggressive move by Spithill here with only 30 seconds to go. Trying to push Barker too far down in the box. That is Jimmy's. That is what Jimmy's trying to do. 20 seconds to go. New Zealand is in huge trouble here, being so low. Spittle start is going to be easy if he accelerates now. the line with more momentum. Dean Barker does have the favorable line, but the Americans are accelerating from the Kiwis. This is all about pace. Can Everett's Team New Zealand keep an overlap as they approach this three boat length circle? You hear Slingsby even say he's overlapped. Phenomenal job by Team New Zealand keeping the overlap and protesting Oracle. Let's see what the judges say. No penalty coming. So they wave off the penalty. The Kiwis don't catch a break there. They were first to the circle. They had the overlap, and the Americans pushed it just a little bit. So that's definitely got to be a break for Team USA. Just hung on. That was reaching speed we haven't seen out of, out of Emirates Team New Zealand this entire event so far. Great job by Dean Barker keeping that overlap and making it stick. All right, Gary. So the Americans have found themselves behind for the first time in the last two races. What do they do now? Well, what do they do now is not panic. They know they were going well upwind before. Just stay as close as you possibly can, split the gate, and they'll have a good chance to, pace, to pass on the third leg. Big lead already over 150 meters for New Zealand, and the USA dropping behind, but the American speed is just a little bit, just a little bit behind the Kiwis at this point. Certainly no panic there, Todd, aboard the American boat. No question. My goodness, though, that was so close to being an Oracle lead at that mark. Just incredible job. I can't, I can't say enough how good a job Team New Zealand did to keep that overlap and make it stick. 40 seconds this way. Well, the Americans had the acceleration at the line, but it was Dean Barker who had the position as we take a look at Virtual Eye. Just staying forward of the wing wash. Their air is barely clear here, barely. And they just, <laughs> look at that. The over Thank goodness they didn't cut their spinnaker pole off because that could be the difference, you know? It really, the way they're controlling these boats coming in, the wing wash is just behind, just to weather or the right-hand side of Emirates Team New Zealand. They keep a tiny bit of clear air and make it work. Again, we're talk, always talking about turning points, a huge turning point in this regatta. Just that one little leg, that mark round. And if the yeah, Americans would have got the penalty, Gary, it could have been game over. Yeah, I mean, the nice move here by New Zealand was to stay up on the wind here a little bit and Spittle on the right, working hard to stay clear, lost a lot of distance. When the uh, New Zealanders turned away, they gained four lengths. Very nice move by Dean Barker. So here we are on leg number two. New Zealand has the lead. It's dropped to 135 meters. And they're already starting to think about mark number two. Again, we keep repeating ourselves here, but Ainsley will be thinking about a split now. That's all he wants to do is try to round the opposite mark to Emirates Team New Zealand as they approach the bottom gate. Go, Tommy. Go, go. Go, go, 
So the Americans closing the gap just a little bit. All right, Ken, as we look down toward that Leward mark down there, gate number two. Who do you like? Whose position is more favorable? Well, I, I think you'll see the same thing. Emirates Team New Zealand not trying to minimize maneuvers and not trying to do too much. Thinking, hey, you know, we have pretty good pace against these guys. I don't, no need, reason to panic, that's for sure. And then Oracle, they're going to do everything they can to get a split. That's Ray Davies counting down to the ley line call. He has those instruments right on his body, on his wrist, or on his chest, and he can see exactly how far he is from ley line or the approach directly to the mark. Ready for it. Todd Jimmy Spithill just said one in left. They're going for a split down here, but it's a tough maneuver. In race 10 at gate number two, it's the Kiwis, the first ones to the mark. And the challengers will head closer to shore, so that really forces the hand of the Americans as Jimmy Spithill enters the circle and he's gonna head closer to Alcatraz Island. And get slow around this mark. This was not the perfect rounding that these guys needed to have. They got slow, they jived a little early. Like I said before, it's a really hard maneuver to pull off and it wasn't perfect, they'll be the first to admit. Surprised New Zealand has attacked to get back into the center to stay between them and Oracle Team USA. Attack. 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 Gary, this ebb tide definitely allows the boats to spread it out a little wider and not have to go crazy on tacking, but you're right, they'll, they'll keep an eye on uh, USA at this stage, that's for sure. Yeah, Kenny, you remember Oracle gained on the right side of the course where they are now in the last race, and that's where they're positioned, so they have an opportunity to catch up. Nice and smooth, boys. Send it down. Attack, fellas. Still right back in this. Looks like a gain to Oracle to me. Saying we're going to set up parallel. That's because the wind is better on the right side. It's shifted more to the right. That helped Oracle, and New Zealand wants to get on the right side to take advantage of that wind shift. Definitely a little better current out where New Zealand's going. This is not shocking at all to see them go across. They gain starboard tack advantage, of course, if they ever got close, which they're not really very close right now, but definitely better current on the dumping grounds right out by Alcatraz Island. Emirates, Team New Zealand, their lead has grown to 140 meters. If you're USA, you're looking to tack to get this back into the center of the course. But look at this, Oracle Team USA making the tack, keeping it centered, perfect. I like the tactics of Ben Ainsley. Let's move this back down, guys. Going well. Straight here. Same lead here, boys. This is good. I think a few days ago, we would have just thought this race was over. And now, I, I think everybody in the world watching this race is on pins and needles. Can Oracle keep coming at them? Because it looks to my eye, Gary, they're kind of reeling them in a little bit right now. It's not tight yet by any means, but it certainly doesn't look like it's further away. You know, Kenny, I feel like I'm watching Usain Bolt have a slow start and come charging through. They're clearly gaining. That's Oracle Team USA is certainly gaining here.
Take a look out on virtual eye. The animation on board. We'll talk about the current here, and it's starting to build just a little bit. The ebb tide, which is going out to sea, and it's getting a little heavier. Yeah, you see a little better tide on the right-hand side, where Oracle is at this stage. I kind of thought the Team New Zealand would bounce Oracle and actually send them back to the left side of the race course. By bounce, I mean tack on top of them. But they gave them the, a little bit stronger position when it comes to tide. You never know about wind shift, but certainly as it comes to tide. This is leg three of five, race number 10, the second race of the day. The Americans have won the last two. Hill with his hand on the wheel behind him, Tom Slingsby behind him, Ben Ainsley. So at roughly the halfway point of the final race of the day, it is Emirates Team New Zealand, the challengers out in front of the defenders by 125 meters, but the Americans are coming and coming fast. Pressure on the tacticians at this stage. Ray Davies, these are his calls when he wants to go. How is he going to try to set up the other guy in order to make that big gain toward the end of the leg? As we check in on the water with Gary Jobson. Gary, how is the wind? Is it picking up that much more? The, are the currents and everything just kind of holding firm? Well, the current's actually slacking a little bit, so that helps out. The wind is staying about even. I think we're going to get it in. Remember, they get to the winter mark. The wind limit is out. But I'll tell you, look at Ray Davies there. That looked like a worried man to me. He knows the other boat's sailing faster. I don't know if Ray Davies is ever worried, Gary. I know him pretty well. But these guys certainly are, are getting chumped on a bit. And at the cross on leg number three, this is just how close it is. The battle for the victory in race number 10 is on. Under 100 meters as the Americans have made up more than 45 meters just in that last little bit. Todd, it was interesting in the last tack. The both boats tacked from the opposite sides of the race course right at each other at exactly the same time. New Zealand bottomed out at 11 knots. Oracle bottomed out at 13 and a half knots. They're actually tacking faster at this stage. We're very close to Oracle right now. From my perspective, down on the water, I like the position Oracle's in. They have a little bit more favorable current sweeping them toward the winter mark, and the wind direction is better. So they're going to have a better course, uh, course for the mark. Oracle's looking good. sailing really fast right now. I just saw Emirates Team New Zealand pop a wheelie for a second and, and lost almost three boat lengths in that one maneuver. They got a little out of sequence with their boards. Oracle is right back in the hunt. And they have the right away, Ken, as they come together. New Zealand is in trouble. So the Americans have made up more than 150 meters on a leg that in the past has been their kryptonite. And here they are. They have the right of way as we get ready for a big cross. 60 knot closing speed. The two boats coming together. But now Team New Zealand will have the right of way when they come back. Who can tack better on this next, next tack would actually be the race. Psychologically very devastating in Team New Zealand. It's hard to pick yourself up after you lose a lead like that. Five, three, two, one, 
So the Americans have taken the lead away on leg number three. Kenny, look at this cross, and look how fast they're going. <laughs> this, is, this is sailing like we've never seen before. And these guys are just wheeling these things around like it's a dinghy out in your Tuesday night race at that uh, Barrington Yacht Club back in Rhode Island. If Oracle dips, but then again, yep. they're going to be on starboard. Another cross coming up. Another lead change. Kenny, in a long history of the America's Cup, dating back to 1851, we've seen more lead changes in this cup than any cup in history. The technology introduced at the 34th America's Cup is space age, and they've taken it to a whole new level, much to the delight of Larry Ellison. It is now New Zealand and USA neck and neck here on race number 10. And people said catamarans couldn't match race. Match racing on steroids and a lot of emotion. So once they get around mark number three, the wind limit goes away. It looks like that will be the case. One more starboard tack, crossing coming here. Now the boat link, the circles actually come into play. Who gets into what circle first? This could be a really interesting mark rounding here at the gate. Emirates Team New Zealand is going high and slow right now. Looking for a dip at the last second. They want to dip and still be able to lay this gate. Well, that tactic Oracle needs to slow down. Another cross, another lead change. And at mark number three, it is almost dead even. Wow, there's nothing in this. So they'll make their way back towards San Francisco City and the race is on. Who will emerge as victorious here in race number 10 on day six of the 34th America's Cup? five and Ken that third mark may have been the telltale sign. Kenny if you were the Americans you had an opportunity there to stuff the Kiwis if you were on just stall out here and bear off to the right. Well no they would have been passed that, that's exactly how the setup had to play out. The Kiwis actually did a really nice job of slowing down early they went high and slow early so they could dip and still make the mark. Both of these boats set this up as well as they possibly could have. But now you have Team New Zealand coming at star on starboard tack. The lead is under 20 meters. We have one and a half legs to go in this race, and we will have ourselves a winner. The Americans coming in awfully fast at the top of your screen. Two boats coming at each other at 80 knots. Combined speed. <laughs> Jimmy Spithill has made the decision to slow down and go behind, which is a really tricky move to make and, and keep your judgment. And sure enough, there's now a large gap between the two. I'm surprised they didn't just jive with him. That's a tough thing to pull off if you're Oracle Team, New Z Oracle, uh, Team USA. Yeah, I think a big mistake there by Ben Ainsley, Ken. Why not job on the win and stay right with him if it's that close? They might have been able to block their win. Now they've given away the lead. And the lead is now over 100 meters. This is like four of five. They'll head to the top of your screen. They will make a big right-hand turn, and then the race is on to the finish. Oh, when New Zealand does make the jive, remember Oracle Team USA will be unstarted with the right away.
Todd, I can't tell you how that kind of slow down and dip behind uh, Emirates Team New Zealand. The move that Oracle tried to make, that has a difficulty factor of about 10 out of 10 to actually pull off and keep close. But like Gary said, they're now they're on starboard, but they're well behind. They, they're going to need a break here at this stage. They're going to need New Zealand to make a mistake. You know, we're right behind the boats, and I'm looking, and Oracle sailing a lower course than New Zealand right now. That might be the saving moment for them if they're able to keep that low course and the high speed. Great babies just keep such a cool demeanor. Here we are in, in the pivotal race in the America's Cup, and he's like, yeah, I think we're gaining a little bit here. Just really, really, this is the voice you want to hear if you're steering the boat. That is the target, mark number four. When they hit that, they will head off to the right-hand side of the left of your pitcher and head towards the finish line. Nice game, boys. On it, off of Emirates Team New Zealand. Again, that dipping move by Oracle, they're gonna go back and they're gonna question the, what they did at that particular time. Nice little lead, a couple hundred yards. It went from zero to 200 yards in a matter of seconds, Todd. I like to move sailing beyond the lay line, that yellow line there. It just gives it a little more conservative, takes away any passing lane for Oracle Team USA, plus you come in with a little extra speed. Nice move by the New Zealanders. And this is typically where Dean Barker just puts the pedal down. There you see the knots coming up as they approach mark number four. It's the Kiwis in firm control, traveling at 42 knots, which is 48 miles an hour, and they make the turn first for home. The lead was one second at mark number three, and now the Kiwis have opened it up. The lead is now closer to 10 seconds as the Americans finally hit the mark, make it 11. Ken, this is almost no man's land when the Kiwis have a lead and a straight line to the finish line. Good luck. Not much in it here at this stage. Don't just don't do anything crazy. Don't rev it, don't over rev it up. You got a nice little lead right now. Don't do anything silly. You know, guys, I really like the fact that nobody in the New Zealand boat is looking back at the competition, looking ahead for the finish. Very nice. Looking ahead for a finish line that they have not been first to in the last two races. But they will stop the hemorrhaging of loss as the Kiwis sail a magnificent race, neck and neck with the Americans. And then at leg number four, one small mistake possibly by Oracle Team USA, which opens the door. Race number 10 will go the way of the challenger. Emirates Team New Zealand will pick up the victory. I believe that sigh of relief comes from approximately four million people in the small island of New Zealand. Just a fantastic race all the way around. The Americans just couldn't get it done. They finished 17 seconds behind, but can I agree with you? They will go back and look at leg number four and ask themselves what could have been. But for New Zealand, no mistakes. The Kiwis reign supreme in day 10. It's gonna turn up. All right. That's race 10, day six. All right, here we go. Hold on, boys. Hold on. Hold on. They're all going to go back and look at that weather mark. Yes, New Zealand came in and ducked Oracle at the very last second, but they set themselves up for starboard tack advantage on the run. Whether they were actually thinking that far ahead, we'll never know. But they sure stepped into something that worked perfectly for them. Starboard tack on the first cross, going 40 knots downwind. The other guys had to slow down, let them pass. The rest is history. And with no racing scheduled for tomorrow, you have to say the momentum has shifted back over to the Kiwis as they now need just two races. So they could, Gary Jobson, close this thing out on Tuesday. 
Well, it's going to be very windy on Tuesday, and the boat speeds are even. But I'll tell you what, Ken's saying, where they setting that up early, they were thinking about that all the way up that windward leg. And you see the massive crowd at America's Cup Park that have turned out on a spectacular day here in San Francisco. It doesn't matter what flag you're waving, you can appreciate what you just saw out of the water. As Ray Davies takes the helm momentarily, the Kiwis look so good and a sign of a true champion. When they're down, they came back fighting and they got the job done in race number 10. The scoreboard now reads New Zealand 7, America 1. So the folks waking up down in New Zealand, congratulations. Your team picks up a very pivotal win. We talked about it during the break, how, how so important race number 10 was as we join the skipper and helmsman for Emirates Team New Zealand, Dean Barker. Dean, congratulations. That race was huge. From your vantage point was leg number four the key moment. Uh, which one's leg four? There's the down one. Um, yeah. Um, well, no, we, you know, we, we sort of sailed the first half of the, uh, the up one pretty well, and then they just got one decent chunk all in one hit, um, which uh, turned what was sort of a comfortable lead into a, a uh, well, we actually were behind them. So um, guys just dug it in, and uh, we got opposite gates at the top, and I think, you know, our, our gate was probably the preferred one, and uh, at intersection, um, halfway down the run, well, wasn't really a lot they could do. Hey, Dean, great job. Congratulations. So take us back to the start. Again, you guys barely hung on at that first mark. Did you think you were going to get rolled? Do you think you're going to be okay? What, how, how do you judge that? Um, yeah, well, you know, obviously it's, uh, it was a big fight for um, starting to load again. And, uh, you yeah, know, we got it, but, um, but you know, not, not a pretty start. But, you know, we just m managed to muscle it across the reach. Um, and the guys sort of you know, did a really good job just managing the race. You know, they, they had one little skid, which... Um, you know, cost them, uh, cost them quite a lot of ground, and uh, that actually managed to mean we could get around inside them. So, uh, yeah, we had a nice run after that. Dean, congratulations. We'll cut you loose. Uh, we will see you on Tuesday. Let you boys get back to the dock. Yeah, Roger. Thanks. Emirates Team New Zealand gets the victory. Oracle Team USA had all the momentum in the world, and I'll tell you what, they can sail upwind now, no problem whatsoever, as we join Jimmy Spittle. Jimmy, what a race. Uh, I don't think we've seen anything like that in the history of the America's Cup, that close of racing. Take us through the race. Where was the critical moment for you guys? Oh, well, we had a couple of critical moments, which was great. I mean, uh, we got off the line well, and unfortunately, we just sort of got out of uh, phase on the reach there. We, were, we had rolled him, and then we just sort of touched down. And uh, yeah, so anyway, that was, we had to fight back from there. But Benny and Tom and, you know, all the boys did a great job bringing us back into the race up that beat. Hey, down that run, Jimmy. Give, give us an idea as you look back on it now. Hindsight is obviously a beautiful thing. Is there anything else you could have done rather than slow down and actually take their transom? I don't know. I mean, we were talking about jiving on top, but then you probably would have just been pinned out in the corner. The apparent wind so far forward, I'm not sure we could have ever affected them. So I'm not sure. I mean, maybe taking a bit more risk and not slow down as much and really tried to shave their stern, you know? Well, Jim, every change you've made has seemed to improve the boat speed. Looking ahead with the day off tomorrow, do you make some more changes or do you come out and go sailing? Yeah, we're going to have to look at it. I mean, we've got a few more ideas. I mean, it's been great. The team, we've really been improving the boat every single day. No question, we would have taken some big lessons from today. And yeah, if we can, we'll get out on the water tomorrow. Jimmy, I know you and the boys are looking forward to Tuesday. We appreciate your time. Congratulations on a good day. We'll see you on Tuesday. Thanks, guys.